This is ChestertonRadio.com. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. That's all you're doing. Just asking. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. Just asking. When you found out we couldn't get delivery on that plane for two weeks, why'd you go ahead and order it? Because we want an airplane. But there's other airplane factories. Why didn't you tell them to go jump in the lake? Because this is the kind of plane we want. Well, just the same. It looks oh, to me like... Oh, forget it, will you, Doc? We've been over this once. We've been over it a dozen times. Well, I still would like to know what we're going to do in San Diego for two whole weeks. Sit here and like it. Besides, supposing we had the plane. We haven't got any plans. What would we do with it? Well, I could think of something, I bet you. Such as what? Well, well, how about flying to the Hawaiian Islands? And what would we do after we got to Hawaii? Well, I I hear they got some mighty good-looking hula girls in Hawaii. Oh, nuts. Well, okay, then. Uh, How about a nonstop flight from here to Singapore? Yeah, or Timbuktu. You don't like that either, huh? No, I don't like that either, huh? Well, we ain't been to Central America for quite a spell. Well, now, that's some better. <laughs> you you kind of like that, huh? I don't know. What will we do when we get there? Well, how do we know? There's always something interesting to do in them countries down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I'll say it ain't. There's a lot of hot stuff down yonder besides food. And I don't mean the weather. I wonder what Reggie'd say to Central America. Oh, what the heck? Reggie don't care. If it means you say Central America, then then Reggie says Central America. We'll, uh, we'll have to steer clear of Guatemala. Oh, they probably forgot us by this time. Oh, don't you think they have? And there's one thing I don't want to do, spend the rest of my life in a Central American jail. Boy, boy, do they have filthy hooskows down there. Then it's uh, Central America, sure enough? Yeah, let's sleep on it. No, it sounds good. And here we got to wait two weeks before we can get started. Now, Doc, don't start that again. Hey, where'd Reggie go anyway? <laughs> he said he's going over and sit in the lobby of one of them big hotels and look at the pretty women. Reggie said that? Well, well, I said it and he didn't deny it. Not Reggie. No, I reckon he's over at the airplane plant, keeping an eye on our ship. Now well, that's more like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was saying this morning he's going to see that every bolt and wire that went into our plane is going to be right. Well, he's the boy who can tell. I bet he's about as popular as a mad dog over there. <laughs> he won't let that worry. What's the idea? Who are you calling now? Same place. Hello? Uh, g- give me room service. Hey, you're not going to eat again. Well, what else is there to do? But this is the fourth time. Hello? Room service? Well, look, he send up half a dozen fried ham and egg sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, half a dozen. And a quarter of milk. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Wait a minute, you want any, Jack? No, I don't want any. Okay, that's all. And, and don't take all day. Don't you realize it's six o'clock? We'll get down to dinner as soon as Reggie gets here. Well, what the heck? Six sandwiches ain't gonna hurt anybody's appetite. Well, not yours, anyway. Hey, Jack. No? Yeah? You done any thinking about the maestro or Nasha lately? No. What? Oh, I don't know. I keep feeling kind of bad. The maestro went and got himself sent up for life. He was lucky not to get the gas chamber. Yeah, I suppose so. But I keep seeing his big fat carcass is sitting on a stone bench in one of them little old cells. He wasn't made for that sort of thing. Pretty tough, all right. It's just well of you to get nice of that job. Oh, why not? She'd have starved to death without the maestro if somebody hadn't done something for her. Yeah. She sure did depend on him a lot. Dancing in a nightclub up in Hollywood isn't much of a job. Well, just the same, the crowd sure go for her. Well, it's a meal ticket anyway. She's as good as they seem to think she is. Maybe she'll get something better. That poor old maestro. I wonder if he'll try any of his magic tricks up in the big house. Well, open the door. Come on in. 
Except the door's locked. Oh, hey, Jack, open the door for the waiter, will you? Certainly not. They're your sandwiches. Well, of all the two-tailed sippy cans. Hey, hey, you're gonna open this door, ain't you? Well, ain't you got a key? No, I ain't got no key. Oh, okay, I'll get up. Just plain accommodating, ain't you? Well, they're not my sandwiches. Well, don't ask for one, either. <laughs> don't worry. Hey, hey, those guys are out. I'm a coming. Keep your britches on. Oh, thanks, pal. Well, hey, where's the sandwiches? I said, where's the sandwiches? What sandwiches? Well, ain't you the waiter? No, I ain't the waiter. Oh, you ain't, huh? That's right, buddy. I ain't the waiter. You don't say. Sure, I say. And don't neither of you boys bat my eye on account of I'm a torpedo and I'm hot. <laughs> You hear that, Jack? Yeah. I don't see no shooting pistol. What you think this bulge in the coat pocket is? A birthday present. Oh, so you're a torpedo and you got the drop on us. Well, what about it? You got cash? Well, what about it, Jack? We got any cash? Mm, a little. Yeah, we got a little cash, son. And how about shelling out? Oh, I get you now. What do you mean you get me? Well, you're one of these people who advocates the redivision of wealth. I don't get you. No, don't move your hands. I mean, you want half of everything we've got. Wrong. I am? You bet. I want all of everything you've got. <laughs> Just a doggone haul. All right, come on, come on. Cut the gab. I'm passing the collection plate. Shell out. Well, now, fella, when you put it like that... Hey, who's that? Probably the waiter with dark sandwiches. Waiter, huh? You let me handle this. And the first mug that speaks out of turn gets hot lead in his sandwiches. You ordered sandwiches? That's right. Bring them in and set them down. Sure. Uh, what kind of sandwiches are they? Fried ham and egg. Yeah? The egg's fried soft. How can you eat a soft egg in a sandwich? Well, what you standing there for? I usually get a tip. Oh, so you want a tip, huh? Yeah. Well, take a tip from me, buddy. Do something about that sore throat. That ain't no sore throat. It ain't? No, I had my tonsils cut out and some of my vocal cords come out with them. <laughs> get out. Get out of here. No tip? No tip. No, I am glad I spilled them sandwiches on the floor. <laughs> spilled them on the floor, huh? Well, they don't look spilled to me. Hey, let them sandwiches alone. They're mine. Quiet, buddy. Ham and egg sandwiches are my favorite fruit. Why, blast your ornery hide. Mm, hey, that's good, too. What's that stuff in the bottle? It's a milk, and you leave the be. You drink it? Of course I drink it. Huh. I ain't had no milk since I cut my milk tooth. Almost forgot how it tastes. Jack, are we just going to sit here and let him eat my sandwiches and drink my milk? I am. Well, I ain't, Dad. Blame me. Sit down. Sit down, nothing. Sit down. Or would you rather have a hole in your middle? Jack, don't be a fool. Well, that makes me just plain mad. Ah, that's better. Hey, say, that milk ain't such bad stuff. <laughs> no wonder babies cry for it. Go to swell with sandwiches. You, you gonna eat them all? Thanks, Bell. I don't mind if I do. And say, uh, how about ringing downstairs and having them send up some chocolate cake? Well, I'll be doggone if I will. You don't like chocolate cake? No, I don't. Well, I ain't adverse to a slug of coconut cake. Uh, you like coconut cake? No. And I don't like banana cake. What? You don't like banana cake? No, I don't. Oh, that's too bad. Hey, hold it. I'm going to have me another slug of milk. Get him, Doc. You bitch. Hey, 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 hey look out. Hey, hey. Get his gun, Jay. I got it. Now then, get up on your feet. Hey, 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 hey. Cut off the rough stuff, huh? <clears throat> <sighs> Eat my sandwiches, will you? Hey, you, you shouldn't have knocked him out, Doc. Why not? Well, now we got a body on our hands. Yeah? Well, just open the door. What for? Well, just open it. I'll show you. Uh, uh, yeah, kind of hefty at that. What do you think you're going to do with them? You see that linen closet across the hall? Huh? Oh, I see. You want some help? No, nope, no. Nope. Just open the closet door. Uh, there. Let him sleep off my sandwiches in there. Yeah. I wonder what gave him the idea he could come into our room and hold us up in the first place. Oh, probably just one of them smart operators. Yeah. 
Well, by the time we get back into our room and clean up a bit, Reggie ought to be here. Yeah, come on. I'm hungry. Hey, hey Doc. Listen. Doggone. Will you listen to that little old she-girl cry? It's coming from the room right next to ours. You think we ought to do something? I don't know. Yeah, come on. It ain't right to let a little old she-girl cry like that. Well, I guess it won't hurt to rap on the door. Yeah. Try the knob. Hmm. Unlocked? Yeah. Uh, open it a crack. Let's see what's going on. We may get our heads knocked off for this. Hey, look. All alone, just laying here on the bed, sobbing her heart out. Yeah. Well, what do we do now? Well, I don't know. I do. Come on in. Who's there? Hello. Who are you? We're from next door. We heard you crying. Is there anything we can do? No. No. Go away. Hey, we can't leave you here crying like that. Go away if you know what's good for you. Go away. All we want to do is... If you know what's good for you, stay away from me. Why do you keep saying that? It's true. Something horrible happens to every man who knows me. Hey, what sort of something? Death. Horrible thing. I want to die. I want to die. Oh, that's silly. I'm an enemy of society. Killing the things I love. Bringing death to those who try to help me. You do all that? Yes. It's the Richard curse. I'm evil. Evil. Don't touch me. Further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller Who are you? What are you doing in my room? I'm Jack Trackard. This is Doc Long. I still don't know who you are or what you're doing here. Well, there are three of us. Reggie's out just at the moment. Three men looking for adventure. You mean soldiers of fortune? (laughs) Well, not in the ordinary sense, but the term does help to explain us. We like excitement. When we find something that interests us, we go after it. 
and hearing me crying in my room interested you? Yes. Now, if we can help But you, you can't. Nothing will help but to put an end to my miserable life. Hey, you stop talking like that. <laughs> you mean you came to this hotel with the intention of taking your own life? Yes. But you're young and beautiful. And evil. Hey, what kind of talk is that? There's no use talking about it. Everywhere I go, I spread death and destruction. You, uh, you haven't told us your name yet. Sonny Richards. Sonia, but... But they call me Sonny. Say, that's swell. Sonny. You wipe them tears away and Sonny fits you like a paper on the wall. You don't know what you're talking about. You're beautifully dressed. That bracelet on your wrist must have cost a lot of money. Everything about you says money. You must have come from a very wealthy family. There is no family. It's just me. I see. Then you're wealthy in your own right. Money, what good is it? What good when... When... When what? When everything I touch turns to dust and ashes under my fingers. Do you mind explaining? Why should I? Tell us what's wrong and let us decide whether we can help you. It's hopeless. Well, tell us. If we think it's hopeless, we'll walk out of here and let you go ahead and do what you intended to do. Do you mean that? I promise. Now then, what is it? I... It... It's the Richard Kurt. What do you mean? Every other generation it falls on some member of the family. Four generations ago, it, it was my great aunt, four times removed. Two generations ago, it was my grandmother. It always falls on one of the women. In this generation, it's me. Well, what, uh, what is this Richard curse? The great aunt caused the death of her husband, and then she caused the death of her four children. You mean she murdered Oh, them? no, no, no. She loved them dearly. It was accidental. She was cleaning her husband's gun. And it went off and killed him. And the children were burned to death in their home. She'd locked them in while she was away from the house because they were so little. And when she came back, the house was burned but dark. accident. It's a curse. It's been in the family for, for generations. Well, what about your grandmother? Grandmother was kind and gentle. She wore a little knitted shawl around her shoulders, and she spent all her spare time reading her Bible. But she was cursed. When she was a little girl, the first man she loved was thrown from a horse and killed. But that wasn't her fault. Wait. The next man who loved her fell off a cliff to his death. Was she there at the time? No. Well, then, don't you see how silly... And then she married my grandfather. And after my mother and my uncle were born, he... He was drowned. And then when my uncle was 15, she shot him up in a closet to punish him. And he was suffocated. Hey. And it's always been that way. What are the women in every other generation? And now what about you? Well, I... I'm worse than any of them. Maybe. Let's hear it. First it was my mother and father. You was the cause of their death? Yes. I wanted to be a flyer. I learned to pilot a plane. And one day I got... I got them to go up with me. The plane fell? <laughs> They were both killed. No, please. Please try not to cry. Oh, it's all right. I haven't much cry left in me. Here, use my handkerchief. Thank you. You were an only child? Yes. But then about a year ago, I, I became engaged with Phil. We'd only been engaged three months when his car went over a cliff and it... Dead, huh? No. But he was so badly hurt, he'll always be a bedridden cripple. Oh, fella, that's too bad. He would have been better off if he had been killed. But it wasn't your fault. Wait! About six months ago, I began letting Roger come and see me. I was still in love with Phil, but I should go out a little. And one night, just as he was leaving my house, he was held up and shot. Did they catch the gunman? No. Any more? Yes. There was an old friend of my father's. He used to visit me sometimes, and about four months ago, he fell down the front steps at my house, and he was hurt so badly that he never recovered. Hey, I'm beginning to think you got something with that curse. I knew you'd believe me. I don't. But there's no other explanation. Things like that don't happen to other people. You weren't connected in any way with any of these things. 
They're unfortunate, but you've nothing to do with them. You've let them prey on your mind until you've become morbid. Morbid? Yes, you've developed a guilt complex. If that's all... It isn't... Yesterday it happened again. You mean somebody else died because of you? Yes. I was to have had lunch yesterday with Freddy. I'd only met him a week ago. He didn't keep the engagement. So I rang up his home. And you know what they told me? You know what had happened? What? Suicide. He killed himself with a gun in his bathroom. Sonny, stop it. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> you struck me? Well, get hold of yourself. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Cry. It'll do you lots more good. I wish I were dead. I wish I were dead. Jack, this is all. Oh, go away. Go away and let me do what I've got to do. We're not going anywhere. But you promised. I said we'd go if there wasn't anything we could do. Oh, you can. I'd like to try. Oh, you fools. You fools. Get out of here. Don't you understand? It'll happen to you, too. What do you mean by that? Everybody who comes near me is cursed, and you're the same as dead being in this room with me. Now go away. Go away, I can't bear any more. If we're willing to take that risk, what's it to you? I don't want any more blood on my hands. I can't stand it. Don't you understand? I can't stand it. You can stand it for two weeks, can't you? Two, two weeks? Yes. Give us two weeks to find out what's the matter. Oh, I know what's the matter. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Oh, I don't know what you mean. You say the Richard curses on you. All right. Give us two weeks to lay that curse. Oh, you, you, you can't cure a curse. I'll bet money we can. But it's something evil in me. Something evil that will live and die with me. And I say we can kill the curse without killing you. You... You believe that? Certainly I believe it. I believe it so much, I'll make you a proposition. What? You give us two weeks to lay your curse, and if we fail by then, we leave you alone to destroy yourself without lifting a finger. Oh, but your own lives are in danger. We'll take that chance. No, no, you mustn't. I'm nothing to you. Hey, wait a minute, sugar. Of course you're something to us. I am. You darn right you are. Why, well, this here world needs all the pretty little old female girls it can get. I don't understand. But Doc means you're beautiful. But it's always an unforgivable crime to destroy beauty. Is that what you meant? Well, yeah, I didn't say it is pretty, but that's the idea. Put it this way. From the beginning of time, men have fought and died for beauty. It's one of the few things in the world worth fighting for. And you're a beauty. You're worth saving. We think you're worth enough to fight for you. It's our right, and you can't stop us. No one ever said anything like that to me before. Then you agree? Yes. Now, under no circumstances, no matter what happens, you won't try to kill yourself for two weeks. Yes. I promise. Good. Now get up and go in the bathroom and wash the tears off your face. Oh, I know I shouldn't hope. But I do. Go on. Make yourself more beautiful than you are. Oh, thank you. Well, you asked for it, fella. What do you mean? Well, you know as well as I do, you can't cure curses. What you think you are, a witch doctor? Curse, huh? Yeah, curse. The binocular of Archimedes, nuts. Now, looky, Jack. Six people connected to Sonny had been killed. Five killed, one hurt. But hurt so bad he might as well be dead. Well, what was his name? Phil. Well, you can't tell me that all those folks just happened to die, and all within a year. That does sound fishy. There must be a reason for it. The Richard curse. Something besides the Richard curse. But there ain't no sense to that. They was all accidents. Well, anyway, ways that she couldn't have had nothing to do with. Her papa and mama in the flame crash. Her lover fell in the auto crash. One guy shot by a robber and one fell downstairs. And the last one killing himself in his own bathroom. Well, you don't seem to tie together very well, do they? Except for the curse. Now, look, Doc. I want you to stop mentioning that curse business. But, Jack... Especially in front of her. Never mention it. Well, what's the idea? I want her to forget it. Get it out of her mind. It's an unhealthy thought, and she can't have a healthy mind until she gets rid of it. Well, son, all I got to say... Well, visitors. Good evening, gentlemen. You were looking for something? Yes, Sonny Richard. Sonny? Just a minute, Doc. Who are you? My name is Marks, Leslie Marks. I'm Miss Richard's attorney. Attorney, huh? And the executor of the Richard's estate. I see. Now then... What right have you to question me? Who are you? What are you doing in Sonny's room? We're friends of Miss Richards. Friends? That's what I said. Hmm. Friends. How long has this been going on? Long enough. Sonny hasn't been having many friends lately. Why not? 
Apparently, you haven't been her friends long enough to hear of the Richard curse. Are you one of the people who's been filling her mind with that sort of nonsense? Pretty serious nonsense. Five people killed, one injured for life. I know all about that. Doc. Yeah? Tell Sonny to come out of the bathroom. Sure, I'll get it. How long have uh, you known that Sonny was in this hotel? I found out 15 minutes ago. I've had private operatives out looking for her ever since she disappeared from home this morning. You know why she came here? So you do know. I suspected. That's why I was so frantic to find her. Marks. There, that's him and Jack. Well, Sonny. Hello, Leslie. I've come to take you home. All right. We're going with you, you know. What's that? Why not? I've got the house all to myself. Yes, but these men, who are they? What right? We're taking the right. We're Sonny's bodyguard. Well, that's ridiculous. Sonny is your attorney. As Sonny's I... attorney, you can go take a jump at yourself. So, you won't be warned. About what? The Richard curse. Please, Leslie, please. Listen, hey, take your hand off me. If I ever hear you mention that curse again in the presence of Sonny, I'll tear you limb from limb. Now, get out. Look here. Get out. You get your things together, Sonny. We're going home with you. You shouldn't have done that. He won't take that. Shucks, honey. This is only the beginning. Only the beginning. transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. Morse adventure thriller. Now then, Sonny, if you're ready, we're going to start taking you apart. Taking me apart? Yeah, see what makes you click. <laughs> this sounds very desperate. Pull down that other blind over there, Reggie. Quiet. Well, what I mean is I want to know everything you can tell us about yourself. Don't skip the intimate details. They may be important. Important for what? In finding the source of the influence that seems to have surrounded you. You mean the Richard curse? And I refuse to recognize any such thing as a curse. Then what do you call it? I'd say an evil influence. Well, that means the same thing. Well, now then, let's get started on you. Hey, just a minute before you get too serious. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want to mention, I think Sonny's just about the prettiest 1949 model female yet. Why, Doc? Well, uh, well, what is it that you got, honey, that other girls ain't got? Oh, Doc, you're swell. No, honest. When you come downstairs in them lounging pajamas... My heart done a flip-flap. Uh, flip-flop. Huh? Flip-flop, not flip-flap. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm telling you, Sonny, if you ever feel in the mood for some sparking, I'm the red-headed Texan that can fix you up and no holds barred. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. I'll remember. Mm-hmm. Well, now that Doc's got romance off his chest, let's get down to business. Reggie? Yes? I want you to take down names and dates as we come to them. Mm. Right home. All right. Now, first, Sonny, I want the names of all the people in any way associated with you. Is that a big order? No, not very. I'm pretty much let alone now. All right, let's begin right here in your own house. Uh, who takes care of you here? Jackson. He's the Negro butler? He is. His wife is in the kitchen, and I have a Negro chambermaid for the upstairs work. They've been with you a long time? Jackson and his wife have been here ever since I was a little girl, and they're very devoted. The upstairs girl has been here for two years. 
Now then, uh, what about that attorney fellow who came up to your hotel room? Leslie Marks? Yes, Marks. Well, he and my father were close friends. He's been the family attorney as long as I can remember. That's why father named him executor of his estate until I reached the age of 25. And how old are you now? 24. You're, uh, you're fond of Marks? Well, he's been very kind, but he is domineering. He, he has a violent temper, and lately I'm afraid we've quarreled quite a lot. About the estate? Yes. Can you tell us what it was about? Well, I needed extra money over my regular allowance. Quite a lot of extra money. Why? Uh, on account of Phil. Oh, yes. Phil was the man you were engaged to and was injured in that automobile accident. Yes. See, Phil hasn't any money of his own. He was the pro at the golf club. That's how I met him. He taught me to play golf. I see. And so when he was injured, you took it on yourself to pay his hospital expenses? Yes. Everything. And your attorney objected? Yes. He said that I wasn't obligated to take care of Phil... And that as my trustee, he wasn't in a position to give me the extra money. And so we quarreled. He didn't give you any extra money then? Oh, yes, some. But mostly I've had to skimp on my allowance to take care of Phil. Hey, but looky, sonny. What does this Phil fella have to say about you paying his way? Well, at first he was too ill to realize. That... And then when he did find out, he made a fuss. But now he just seems to be resigned. Well, doesn't Phil have any folks? Only a younger brother, Arthur. He just passed 18, and I, I'm i awfully worried about him. Why? Well, since Phil has been hurt, Arthur has had no steadying influence. I tried to do what I could, but he won't have anything to do with me. He blames Phil's accident on me, and of course he's right. You mean the boy actually blames the Richard curse for his brother's auto accident? Yes. Oh. I'd like very much to talk to Arthur. Where can I find him? He lives in a boarding house. 69 Jameson Street. You got that, Reggie? Yes. Who pays his room and board? Uh, I do. Hey, he don't like you, but he'll take money from you. Yes. Uh, great kid, little Arthur. All right, now then, what other business or social contacts have you? No one that's close. Acquaintances at the golf club. That's about all. That is natural. What about men? No. Not now. What a beautiful young woman like you with a fortune in your lap. There should be honorable young men and fortune hunters all over the place. Not anymore. I am attractive and my money is attractive, but the curse has scared them away. The story of this curse actually is as widespread as that? Everyone knows. I say, and everyone believes. What would you believe under the circumstances? Within one year, my mother and father killed, my fiancé crippled for life, one suitor shot outside my door by robbers. An old family friend falls down my front steps and dies. And still another suitor shoots himself to death. Wouldn't that drive you off? Sure. All within a year. The police have investigated each of these deaths, of course. Naturally. No results? No. I think I'll go down and have a look at some of their records tomorrow. You won't find anything. Maybe not. Now then, Sonny, I'm going to make a peculiar request of you. Yes. <laughs> Are you any sort of an actress? Oh, I don't know. Well, I mean, could you pretend to be uh, more than a little fond of me? I don't understand. Well, you don't have to. But for the next two weeks, I want you to show a lot of interest in me when we're around people. I want us to be seen together. I, I want you happy and smiling. I want you to be very much in love. Oh, I don't know. You'll try? It's important. Very important. Will you? Yes. Except in the presence of Phil... Except Phil. Yes, it would hurt him, and I, I couldn't bear that. All right. I'll take care of that. Naturally, you'd be reserved around him, but there's no reason why I can't show my affection. Oh, but that would hurt him, too. Well, it's only for two weeks. After that, you can explain to him that there was nothing behind it. Well, all right, I'll try. Good. Now then... Phone. I'll get it. Probably Leslie. The attorney? Yes, wondering if I got home all right. Hello? Phil, why aren't you asleep? What? You want me to come to the hospital at this time of night? Well, well, yes, yes, of course, if it's important. Well, I see. Well, hold the wire for just a minute. It's Phil at the hospital. He wants me to come right over. How far is the hospital? Just two blocks across the park. All right, tell him you have company and you'll have to bring us along. Oh, but I... I, I Go ahead, tell him. See what he says anyway. Uh, hello, Phil. Listen, dear, I have company. And if I come, I'll have to bring them along. 
Oh, no, no, it's no one you know, but I'd like to have you know them. All right, we'll come right away. Bye. What did he say? He said it was all right. All right, go get something on. Just slip on a fur coat, it isn't far. Uh, Jack. Well? Well, what the heck are you taking us all over to the hospital for? Well, one reason, I don't want to leave Sonny alone. The other, I want to meet all of Sonny's acquaintances as fast as possible. This is a good chance to meet Phil. Jack, what's this business about making love Sonny? Yeah, that, that there's my department. Oh, not this time it isn't. Oh, I get it. When a really pretty girl comes along, me and Reggie's supposed to take a back seat. Well, it's all right with me. No women, no trouble. Well, it ain't all right with me. Well, I'm ready. Well, come on. Let's go. I had Bill put in this hospital because it was so near here. Oh, I must remember to give you all keys to the front door when we get back. Yes, we may need them. Now, which way? Well, here we can cross the street and right through the park. That's the hospital over there with the lights in the windows. Mm. Tops lost in the fog. Yes. Another hour or two and the fog will settle down on us like a blanket. The park's not too well lighted. Oh, I know the way. Here, here, this path is a shortcut. Well, Sonny and I will lead. Reggie, you and Doc fall in behind. I don't. Oh, well, I just thought of something. Hmm? Huh? I should know something about you three. Phil will be sure to ask me. All right. Uh, when we're aviators, we're in San Diego now waiting for a plane to be put in condition for us. What, is that true? Yes. Yes, I'll give him the name of the plant if he seems curious. If he wants to know any more, let me do the talking. This is all so curious. I met you less than three hours ago. Here you are, closer to me than... Oh. Hey, th- th- that was a gun I know it, the bullet knocked my hand oh, off. No, no. Doc, Reggie, go after him that way. But, Jack... Don't argue, I'm taking Sonny to the hospital. Right on. That gun, two tails. Oh, you see, it's begun already. Stop talking, come on, run. But you mustn't... I can't let you... You can't stop me. Here, across the street. If you're killed... Save your breath. <laughs> now up the steps. <laughs> Get inside yeah, now we're all right. Yeah, which way to the elevator? It's that way. Come on. Oh, oh here, stop there. I can't stand anymore. What floor is still on? Fourth floor. All right. Get in the elevator. Fourth floor, please. You all right now? Yes. Good. What about Doc and Reggie? They can take care of themselves. Out with you. Now, which way? The, the room right down at the end of the hall. Mm-hmm. Don't... Don't say anything about the shooting to Phil. Well, why not? I haven't told him about it. About any of the tragedies. It might upset him to, to know all that's been going on. All right. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just walk right in. Is that you, nurse? No, Phil, darling. It's me. Sonny. Sonny. What the deuce are you doing here at this time of night? But Phil... Who's this fellow? This is Jack Packard, Phil. Phil Terry, Jack. How do you do, Terry? He's the one I said was with me when you called. When I called? What are you talking about? But, Phil, you did call. I talked to you. You're crazy. I haven't called anybody tonight. But your voice... I said I haven't called anybody tonight. Then you must have been mistaken, dear. Dear? Who are you calling dear? My Sonny. I'm very fond of her. Oh, you are? Well, I'll have you know Sonny belongs to me. To me, do you hear? Oh, Phil, Phil, don't get so angry. Trying to steal my girl, are you? Just because I'm a cripple? I'm sorry, Terry. Well, did you ever hear of the Richard curse? Phil! Well, it got me. It got me, see? And it'll get you just the same way. Phil, please! And if the curse doesn't, I will. transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking.
Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller well, all I got to say Sonny that was one bang up me oh right oh thank you Doc and Reggie you bet you if you keep uh, putting up meals like this why you're liable to have us on your hands for a long time to come <laughs> how about that Mr. Marks yes the old negro lady out in the kitchen knows how to cook I've eaten many of her meals through the years. You have, haven't you, Leslie? Ever since I was a little girl. For almost 20 years. You were in the confidence of Sonny's father all that time, Marks? Both as his attorney and his friend. Hmm. I see. Oh, by the way, what's become of Arthur? Here I am, over here. Oh, well, why pick a dark corner? Come on over and join the conversation. What's there to talk about? Oh, come on, Arthur. Be a good sport. Oh, all right. Things like this bore the pants off me. You're an ungracious scamp, Arthur. So what? I asked Sonny to invite you especially tonight, Arthur. Why? Because I wanted to make your acquaintance. Well, I didn't want to make your acquaintance. Then why did you come? Because Phil told me to. Arthur, I don't think you're being the least bit nice. So I ain't being nice. No, you're not. What's getting the matter with you? You didn't used to be this way. Well, I am now, see? Yes, I do see. I don't think Phil, lying over there in the hospital, knows how you're changing. Stop riding me, will you? Arthur, you remember I offered you a job in my office right after your brother was hurt. What about it? The job's still open if you want it. Nothing doing. Don't you work at all? Sometimes. Doing what? Whatever's handy. I saw you the other evening with a girl. Yeah? I wonder if you realize the character, the reputation of that girl in this town. Yeah, <laughs> sure I know. Then I'm surprised you were seen on the street with her. Oh, for crying out loud, am I any better than she is? I can assure you, you won't be for long if you continue in that kind of company. Say, will you folks lay off of me? Who do you think you are, anyway? But, Arthur, we all feel responsible for you. Now that you haven't Phil to help you. I don't want any help. Just let me alone. Hey, fella, you know what you sound to me like. Yeah? You sound to me like a young punk that needs a tar whaled out of. And I suppose you're the guy that can do it, huh? That's right, son. You ain't tough. You're just a kid that's trying to put on a front. Is that so? <gasps> I say. Doc, look out. He's got a gun. Arthur, what are you doing? So I ain't tough, huh? Well, well. A real he-gun toter, huh? And I just as soon drill you as look at you. <laughs> Arthur. Don't anybody move. I'm a moving, son. I'm a moving right up on top of you. Careful, Doc. Careful nothing. Why, this little pasty-faced, poor-flushing cat meets afraid to shoot. Look at it. Can't even look me in the eye. Keep back. Keep back away from me. Looky at him. Him a-pointing a gun right at me and giving ground. Keep away. I warn you, keep away. Just a minute, I'm going to have him backed into a corner where he can't back up no further. Then what you think's going to happen to him? Look out, Doc. No. No. No, huh? What you mean, no? Now you know what I'm going to do? I'll shoot. I'll shoot. Well, go ahead and shoot. Stand back. Keep out of the way. Get away from me. Pull a gun on me, will you? Yes. Here's a gun. Catch it, Reggie. Got it. Now, get to your feet. Up with you. Hadn't you better let him lie down? You gave him quite a jolt. What's a little joke to a tough guy? Come on, come on. What you wobbling for? Stand up. I'll get you for this. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get you for this. Okay, okay. Save the threats. Now sit down in that chair. Let that be a lesson to you. I don't know what you mean. Well, then I'll tell you. Don't you never, never pull a gun on a man unless you aim to shoot him dead. I'll remember. Now, you better, son. 
Because folks just don't mess around at shooting arms. Oh, Arthur, what made you do it? What made you? I don't know. You got me mad. But pulling a gun. Where'd you get that gun? I found it. Let me see it, Reggie. Mm, crying. It's an old thing. Wonder it didn't blow up in his hands. Huh. That was a very brave thing you did, Mr. Long. Walking right up to the muzzle of a gun in the hands of an angry boy. Shucks, I know he wouldn't shoot. Tell by the way his eyes kept going from side to side. All he wanted to do was escape. Will everyone sit down, please? I, uh, I've got something to say. I want to get out of here. You stay right where you are until I've finished. Sonny, darling? Oh. Oh, yes? My dear, will you come here and sit by me? What's this? What do you mean? What impertinence leads you to call Sonny darling and your dear? It isn't impertinence if Sonny doesn't mind, is it? Sonny? And you don't mind, do you, sweetheart? No. No, of course not. Sonny, are you mad? But, Leslie, I'm in love. In in love? Yes, that was one of the reasons for this party tonight, to announce our engagement. Hey, Sonny, you going to marry this guy? Yes, I... But what about Phil? What about my brother Phil lying up there in the hospital? Sonny, you must be out of your head. Why, you haven't known this man more than 24 hours. That's not true. We've been seeing each other quietly for the past six months. But you can't do it. You can't do this to Phil. Your brother already knows, Arthur. He does? Yes. We were over at the hospital last night. What did he say? He said the Richard curse would do to me what it had done to him. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and it will, too. What do you have to say to that, Marks? Yes. Yes, I think Arthur's right. You're challenging death when you announce your engagement to Sonny. Oh, no. Please. Oh, please, Arthur. We decided the Richard curse was a lot of nonsense, so don't let their talk upset you. You decided it was nonsense after all the men who have died? That's what I said. Nonsense. There's no curse. But there is something. Oh, there is something. Yes, we know that. We had a demonstration last night. What was that? Last night when I was taking Sonny over to the hospital. We were walking through the park when suddenly a bullet knocked my hat off. Someone shot at you. Are you surprised? No. No, I can't say that I am. I thought not. Uh, what happened? Well, Doc and Reggie searched the park. Tell them what you found, Reggie. It's a crime. We found the gun that fired the shot. Uh, where was it? We found it in the pocket of a man sitting on one of the benches in the park. You mean you caught the murderer? We don't know yet. He hasn't sobered up enough to talk sensibly. We've got him locked up in the basement downstairs until he comes to. Yes, but how do you know it's the gun? You couldn't tell the caliber by the size of the hole in your hat. That's true. But when we got the gun, the barrel was still warm. It smelled of burnt powder, and there was an empty shell in the chamber. You're going to turn this man over to the police. We'll talk to him first. He doesn't seem to me like a very good candidate. Yes, but the gun in his pocket just after it'd been fired. A man so drunk it takes him 12 to 14 hours to wake up would hardly be able to take a gun out of his pocket, let alone see where to fire it. Naturally. That's my point. It wasn't attempted murder. It was the Richard curse at work. That needs some explaining. Well, don't you see? The curse doesn't breed murder. It breeds accidental death. The drunken man accidentally fired the gun and you were accidentally in the path of the bullet. That's how the curse always works. You don't believe that, and you're stupid to try to make me think you do. But it's happened so often before. Sonny's father and mother killed in the plane accident. Phil injured in an auto accident. The the, the young man killed by robbers. I know all about them, and I still maintain that shot was fired with deliberate attempt to kill last night. May I see the man you have locked in the basement? No. You can at least be civil. No one sees or talks with him until we've had a chance at him. Sonny... Surely you're not in love with this man. Oh, oh, but I am. If you really are, then you should send him to the other end of the world. I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. If you love him, then you can't want any harm to come to him. Oh, no, no. But you know harm will come to him if he stays close to you. Oh, oh. Marks, I think you've said enough. She knows it's true. <laughs> she knows it just as well as Arthur and I. Arthur. Where's Arthur? He slipped out of the room. Doc's trailing him. But why? Why did he go like that? Let him alone. Doc will see he gets home all right. Gets home all right? Yes. I don't understand what you mean. Why shouldn't he get home all right? Sonny, I'm afraid this gathering tonight's been loaded with more dynamite than you realize. You mean Arthur is in danger? Everyone with the exception of yourself is in danger. Everyone who sat down at your dinner table tonight. You... you mean me too? You mean I'm in danger? You know, that's a funny thing about you, Marks. You've probably been more closely associated with Sonny here than anyone else. Yes, that's true. Then why have you escaped the curse when so many others have been its victim? Leslie. Perhaps you're immune to cursing? 
Leslie, I never thought of that. Why have you escaped? I... I don't know. I've been expecting it to happen for a long time. You've been expecting to be struck down and you've continued the association. I'm a friend of the family. I'm Sonny's executor. I've got a job to do. You could have turned it over to the courts. I'm not exactly a coward. I see. But, Leslie, you mustn't. You mustn't take any more chances. That's a very strange thing for you to say, Sonny. What? Ask me to give up a job put in my hands by your dead father when you're willing to let Jack Packard here, the man you love, stay by your side. The phone. I'll take that. Jack, I've got it there. Hello? Oh, Doc. What's that? I see. I see. All right. All right, we'll be ready. Okay. Jack, Jack, what is it? Arthur's just been hit by an automobile. What's that? You see? There's no end to it. There's no end to it until I'm dead. transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. adventure thriller I just got a report on the boy Jack well a fractured left arm and an assortment of bumps and bruises not serious Sam no no not a bit of it the doctor is putting the arm in a cast and nature will take care of the rest boy that's going to relieve Sonny's mind is she up in the bedroom with him yes both Sonny and that attorney chap Marks Doc close the door huh Oh, oh sure bit of a conference Yes, well, we have the library to ourselves. And about time. We ain't had a minute to ourselves since we got on this business. Well, first, Doc, tell us what happened to the boy. Well, it ain't much to tell. You remember, we was all sitting in here gabbing after Arthur pulled a gun on me and I bopped him. Well, when he thought nobody was looking, he sneaked out. And you give me the nod to follow him. Yeah. Well, I did. He seemed awful skittish all the way down the street. Then suddenly an automobile come around the corner and threw its headlights right smack on me. And he saw me. Well, he jumped like he is shot in the pants with a box of tacks and started running across the street, and the car smacked him. Did the car stop? Yeah, a cop was standing on the corner, and he come over and said it that it wasn't the driver's fault. But, uh, well, the fellow was scared silly. He insisted on bringing Arthur back to the house. No chance of it being anything but an accident? Not a chance. Mm-hmm. What are you getting at? Well, in all these tragedies which have happened to people associated with Sonny, I'm trying to separate those which couldn't have been anything but accidents and those which might have been murder or attempted murder. Hey, you think murder's mixed up in this? I'll bet money there is. Well, what you know? Go on, talk some more. Well, as nearly as we can find out, the Richard curse began to work about a year ago with the death of Sonny's mother and father. Yes, but they were killed when Sonny crashed her airplane. Yes, that looks like they were killed accidentally. What you mean, looks like? Well, if someone had wanted them dead, what would be simpler than to tamper with the plane? Oh, but look here. Then that would indicate whoever did it wanted Sonny dead, too. I mean, she was flying the plane, and it's a miracle she wasn't killed, too. Well, why not? Then you think that plane crash was deliberate murder? I'm putting a question mark after that. Now, the next tragedy was Phil Terry's auto accident. Well, that looks like just plain accident to me. Yes, it does to me, too. 
His car might have been tampered with, and I see how it could have been fixed to get out of control at a certain point in the road so it would go over a cliff. Mm, pretty far-fetched. Yes, so we'll have to put Phil's crash down as accident. And next comes Sonny's boyfriend, Roger. Yeah, shot to death by robbers. Right in front of his house. Mm, does that mean anything? I don't know. But we do know that it was murder, pure and simple. But in a way, it was an accident. I mean, maybe if he hadn't tried to fight him off, he wouldn't have got shot. On the other hand, why couldn't he have been deliberately murdered and then his money taken to make it look like a holdup? Yes, but who would do it? And what for? The same one who might have tampered with Sonny's plane. Motive? We don't know yet. Oh, Jack... You're beginning to make it look like there's a mighty smelly polecat hanging around in the background somewhere. Only theory, of course. Let me put murder down after the name of Roger. Well, who's next on the list? The next was the old gentleman, Franklin Skinner, friend of Sonny's father, who visited her from time to time. He fell down the front steps of this house and died of the injury. Accident. Or could he possibly have been pushed down those steps? I say. Well, you ask it. Can you answer it? No. No, the question mark goes down after his name. Kind, they're looking into all right. And now Freddy, the fellow who shot himself to death in his own bathroom. Mm, suicide. I wonder. You wonder what? Well, it wouldn't be the first time that murder's been made to look like suicide. But if the police are satisfied, Jack... We don't know that they are. That's where you and Doc come in. Well, how do you mean? Tomorrow morning, Doc, I want you to go down to the police station and talk to every man on the force who had anything to do with the investigation of these cases. Right from the plane accident on down? Right straight through the whole series. Well, ain't the boys in blue going to think I'm kind of nosy? Oh, not if you work it right. I've uh, still got my credentials given us when we did that job for the insurance company. Oh, I'm an insurance investigator. Why not? Well, it suits me. You, Reggie? Yes? Go out and talk to the employees at the airport where Sonny crashed. I don't. And find out from Sonny where Phil lived before he was hurt and get all the personal information you can from people he used to know. Well, that'll take time. Okay, if you get stuck, don't waste time. And uh, go and see Franklin Skinner's family. Find out what his relationship was to the Richards family. Quite. Now, while everyone's occupied upstairs with Arthur, let's go down to the basement and see how our drug's coming along. I say, the chappie who took a shot at you in the park last night. Well, at least the man who was left holding the gun that fired the shot. Yeah, let's go. Through the back of the house is quicker. Uh, out by way of the kitchen? No, there's a door off this hall down to the basement. No, here, I think this is it. Oh, no, this is only closed. Oh, wait a minute. Put on the light. Huh? Well, what for? There. Have a look at that. Jack, a sawed-off shotgun. A sawed-off shotgun? Keep your voice down there. Come on, close the door and get out of here. But ain't we going to have a look at it? Not now. We might get caught. I don't want anyone to know we've seen it. Doc, uh, can you lock this door? Yeah, easy. Then work on it. Make it snappy. Yeah, just a second. But a sawed-off shotgun, Jack. No one uses those bloody things but gangsters. Interesting, isn't it? What's going on in this house, do you suppose? Hi, come in, Doc. It's coming. Ah, there she is. What'd you want it locked up for? I don't want that gun moved until I've had a chance to examine it. I'll come down later tonight and the house is quiet. Uh-huh. Well, this next door must be the basement. Yeah, this is her. Now, wait till I turn on the light. All right, pull the door to and come on. Not so much noise, Doc. Yeah. Here, this way. It's that door on the right. Mm -hmm. I left the key in the door. get the light. Right out. Yeah. Well, this is what I call a lousy can. Oh, so you've come too, huh? Oh, uh, what did I do to get thrilled in the jug? This isn't a jail. Uh, no? No. Oh, what is it then? The basement of a house. Well, what's the idea? Are you sober? Yeah, I guess I must be. I feel rotten. <laughs> you got our sympathy, fella. Yeah? You got a smoke? Yeah, here you are. Yeah. Got a match? Yep. Hey, you got as fine a case of the shakes as I about ever saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a drink. Mm, that's too bad. What's your name? Fish Evans. Fish Evans, huh? How much do you remember of what happened last night? Before or after? Before or after? Before I got stink all oh. or... Well, both. Where'd you take on the load? Uh... Down at Ed's place. Saloon? Yeah, yeah. You're known down there? Sure. Everybody knows Fish Evans down at Ed's. Mm -hmm. And after you left Ed's? Well, I 
I remember thinking some fresh air would do me good, so I went up to the park. What else do you remember? There was there anything else? I'm asking you. No, uh, if there was, I don't remember it. How long have you been carrying a gun? What are you talking about? I asked you how long you've been carrying a gun. I never had a gun in my life. That's funny. It don't make me laugh. I mean, we found a gun on you. That's a lie. No, we found it on you less than five minutes after someone took a shot at me in the park. Oh, say, I must still be drunk. And what's more, the barrel of the gun was still warm. It smelled of powder smoke, and there was an empty shell in the chamber. Oh, so that's it. Well, what do you mean? Trying to pin a rap on me, huh? No, we're telling you the truth. Are you dicks? No. Well, then who are you? I'm the guy that was shot at. Uh, I'm say, uh... Uh, wait a minute. Well? I'm, uh, I'm kind of beginning to remember something. Well, it's about time. Uh, seems like I was sitting on a bench in the park. Yes? Yeah. I was sitting on a bench and somebody come running up to me and stopped where I was sitting. What did he do? Hey, kind of stopped and poured me over for a minute and then he beat it off into the dark. Uh, I thought I dreamed it. Well, could he have put a gun in your pocket? Yeah, there wasn't nothing to stop him. Can you describe him? Well, uh, there was three of him. What's that? Three of them. Uh, maybe I didn't even have my eyes open. How do I know? Yeah, you're a great help. Looky, Jack, how about him making up all this just to give himself an alibi? Well, your guess is as good as mine. But you're sure someone came up and planted the gun on you? Mister... I ain't sure of nothing except my tongue's hanging out a foot. If we turn you loose, where do you intend to go? I tell it for Ed's place. We can find you there if we want you? That's right. All right, come on. I say, Jack, you're not going to send him loose. That's right. Come on. There's an outside door to the basement. Yes, I know. Don't ever get on the liquor, boys. It'll get you. Thanks for the tip. Here we are. Hey, hey, listen. Sounds like a fire somewhere. Must be a big one. Well, here you are, Evans. You're free. How about four bits for a taxi so I can get to Ed's quick? Oh, look here. <laughs> here you are. Oh, thanks. You look me up sometime, huh? Yeah. You sure enough think that was smart, letting him go, Jack? I hope so. Give him a few seconds more, and then you go after him. Oh, I get it. Tail him and see what contacts he makes. That's it. If he was telling the truth, we'd soon know it. If he goes directly to Ed's place... Jack, fella, that was gun shooting. Come on, quick. <laughs> it had to be a gun. This way. This way. There. There on the sidewalk. Somebody's sure laying down. Right under the streetlight. There. Turn him over. Yeah. It's our man. It's Evans. Man, oh, man. What could have killed him like that? I'll tell you. A sawed-off shotgun up close. Sawed-off? Hey, Jack. You don't have to tell me. There's a sawed-off shotgun in Sonny Richard's house. of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you at the same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Forson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery.
Morse Adventure Thriller. I came over ahead of the others, Phil. So I see. Yes, I can understand why you might want to see me and your brother Arthur. But why Jack, Doc, and Reggie? Never mind why, Sonny. I just do. But you're not strong. Will you cut that kind of talk? I know I'm an invalid. You don't need to rub it in. I'm sorry. And and another thing, Phil, I... I don't think Arthur will be here. He better be here. But there's... There's something I haven't told you. I sent word for the kid to be here. Did you tell him? Oh, yes, of course, but he... Then he'll be here. You got them three fellas living at your house, I hear. You mean Jack, Doc, and Reggie? Who else? Well, yes, I told you they were staying at the house. It's kind of funny. They're moving in on you like that. Well, I'm glad you can talk about it sensibly, Phil. I'd have told you all about it the other night, only... Well, you got so angry with Jack. You're in love with him, sure enough. Yes, Phil, I am. You gonna marry him? I'm sorry, Phil. You are, huh? Yes. You don't care how you spill blood, do you? Oh, Phil, how could... It's a fact, ain't it? You're laying this pack of Romeo wide open for the curse. You're giving him the works. Phil, that's not fair. I've got a right to be happy. Yeah. And I got a right to be walking around on two sound, healthy legs. But I'm not. I'm laying here in bed. I'm going to be laying here from now on. And all because of the Richard curse. And all I hope for your Jack Packard is that he goes out quick. Wouldn't wish what I got on nobody. Phil, Phil. Forget it. They're coming. I don't hear them. I got ears. They're coming. Come in. Go ahead. I've got the wheelchair. Wheelchair? Hello, Sonny. Oh, how are you, Phil? What's this about a wheelchair? Arthur insisted on coming over, so we put him in a wheelchair. Arthur? There we are. Didn't bump you very much. Hello, Phil. Hey, hey, punk. What's the matter with you? Nothing but a busted arm. But you shouldn't have come. The doctor said... Nuts. Now, wait a minute. What's going on here? How'd you get a broken arm? I was going to tell you, Phil. I don't want you to tell me. I want to hear the kid's story. I tried to cross the street. Car come around the corner and smacked me. Is that all? Yeah. Arthur, son, why don't you tell him everything? That is everything. No, fella, that ain't everything by a whale of a lot. Well, then suppose you spill it. Sure. Last night, Sonny here uh, had that attorney fella, Marks, and Arthur to dinner with us three. After dinner, your little brother got nasty and pulled a gun on me. What's that? Sure. I had to smack him down and take it away from him. You blasted little fool. So what? What were you doing with a gun? Wheel him over here beside the bed. Right. Phil. Answer me, kid. What were you doing with a gun? I found it. <laughs> oh, Phil. What were you doing with a gun? I found it. <laughs> oh, oh, no, Phil. I wouldn't take that from nobody else, Phil. He ain't feeling so good, feller. I wouldn't hit him no more. You and I'll settle this between ourselves, punk. Yeah, well, well to, to go on with what I was saying, after our little fracas, Arthur here slipped out of the house and I tailed him. He caught sight of me down the block and uh, tried to dodge across the street. And that's when he got smacked. Why'd you follow him? Well, see, he got home safe. <laughs> Didn't do a very good job of it. If, uh, if you're through with Arthur, I'd like to ask a question. All right, Packard. You asked for us all to gather in your room here. Why? I hear a man was shot out in front of Sonny's house last night. You heard? Sure. Right across the park from the hospital. How could I help hearing? Everybody was talking about it over here. It interests you? Sure. Why? It sounds like the Richard Curse got another victim. No, no, that's not true. And being a victim of the curse myself, I got a fellow feeling for the other victims. I see. Who was he? He said his name was Fish Evans. Ever hear of him? No. He was a bum. But more important, he was found out in the park with the gun that almost shot my head off the night before last. Well, that's interesting. Yes, we thought so. He was drunk, so we held him until he sobered up, got his story, and turned him loose. He only got as far as the sidewalk when somebody got him with a sawed-off shotgun. Hold up, huh? Hold up, men. Don't use sawed-off shotguns. 
And uh, speaking of shotguns, less than half an hour before Evans was killed, we found a sawed-off shotgun in the hall closet over at Sonny's house. Jack, you what? That's right. And after the shooting, we went looking for the gun, and it was gone. What are you getting at? Well, Arthur here brought one gun into the house that we know of. We're wondering if maybe he didn't bring the shotgun in, too. Hey, what you trying to do, tie a murder on me? Is that what you're trying to do, Packard? Tie a murder on a kid? No. I'm just asking. Arthur. Well? Did you have that shotgun? Would you believe me if I said I didn't? You say you didn't, and that's good enough for me. You know I didn't. If you say so. I say so. Well, even if he did... He couldn't have killed that, that Evans man because he was upstairs in bed with a broken arm. But he was up there alone. The doctor had gone and you and Marks had come downstairs. Leslie Marks was there? Yes. What about his alibi? He says he was in the library. Alone? Mm-hmm. Where were you, Sonny? In the kitchen. Fixing some medicine the doctor had given me for Arthur. That Leslie Marks is too smart for his own good. We've thought about that. You're mad to think Leslie would do a thing like that? What about these three mugs, Phil? Arthur, is that nice? Yeah, what about you three? You were the last to see Evans alive. You admit you had access to a shotgun. You'll just have to take our word for it that we didn't kill Evans. How about the police? Are they willing to take your word for it? Well, they heard our story. If I was the police, I'd think this whole setup looked mighty funny. They didn't indicate they thought it was funny. They give you a clean slate? No. No, we're under suspicion like everyone else. But they haven't any evidence to give them reason to lock us up. They might get it yet. They might. If there was any to get. Please, Phil, you're looking awfully tired. You better go to sleep and let us go back across the park to my house. What's the hurry? Well, you're tired and... And Arthur shouldn't be up with that broken arm. I'm doing all right. I'm not through yet. But I say, old chappie, you do look a bit ill. Keep your sympathy to yourself. Well, look here, I didn't mean... I that. know what you mean. Drop it. Quite. Packard. Yep. Yeah. Sonny tells me you're announcing your engagement. That's right. You're a pretty brave man. I don't think so. I was engaged to Sonny. Look at me. I think it's pretty rotten of you to keep throwing that up in Sonny's face, no matter what condition you're Please, in. Please, Jack. And I've got just this to say before we drop the subject. In the first place, I don't believe in curses. Second, Sonny's worth any trouble she might bring along with her. All I want is Sonny. I'll take my chances on the rest. I get it. Then let's drop it. But uh, first, I, uh, I want to apologize. Hmm? What about? What I said the other night. I don't recall. I said, if the Richard curse doesn't get you, that I would. That? Yeah, you were excited, upset. Yeah, yeah, I was upset. It was a fool thing to say. Why should I lie here worrying about how to get even with you when the curse will take care of all that? Yeah, <laughs> and it will, too. You keep <laughs> out of this, punk. Just like it got you, Phil. I told you to shut up. Sure. Just as soon as that arm's well, you're coming over here and take what's coming to you for packing a gun, you understand? I'm not a kid anymore. I say you are. If I ever hear of you with a rod again, I'll call in a couple of cops and let them sweat you from now on. Now then, take him out of here. I've had all I can... This is the room. Come on, boys. Hey, what is this, an invasion? What do you three policemen want? Well, take it easy, Mr. Terry. We won't be bothering you for long. This is a private room. Sure. Me and my two boys here... Got a job to do. What sort of a job? Orders from headquarters to pick up these three men. Oh, look here. Which one of you is Jack Packard? Oh, I am. Doc Long? That's me, pal. And uh, Reggie York. Quiet. They want you down at headquarters. Now, what do you suppose they want us down there for? The Fish Evans murder. That's nonsense. We've been with the police most of the day telling our story. It seems like they don't like your story down at headquarters. Well, it sure took them a long time to make up their minds. Phantom, Sweeney. We're not carrying any weapons. Don't tell us. Let us find out for ourselves. <laughs> I say, a Bobby with a sense of humor. What'd you call me? Oh, take it easy. Bobby's Johnny Bull for cop. But you're going to lock them up? None of them's healed, Sarge. Is that what you're going to do? Lock them up? Not for long, Sonny. Don't worry. That's what you think. All right, come along with you. Oh, Jack, I don't think we got no reason to go down to no police station. We can give you a reason if you want it that way. Forget it, Doc. You mean we're just going to march along? Yes. I ain't hit a policeman, and I don't know how long. Look, you feel something hard and cold in your back? Yeah. It's a cannon, and it shoots. Well, don't jab so hard. I'm ticklish. 
Take him out, boys. Just a minute, Sergeant. Yes, Mr. Terry. I want to say something to Packard. Hmm? Say it. Packard, you recall what I said about relaxing and letting the Richard curse take care of you? I do. Well, I'm beginning to relax. If you've got anything to say to me, say it. I am saying it. It'd be rather funny if the Richard Kirsch should take you three boys to the gas chamber up in San Quentin, wouldn't it? Phil, Phil, you don't mean that. Destroying three of you at one blow. That'll be some kind of a record, even for the Richard Kirsch. <laughs> transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. Adventure thriller. Cross the lobby with you. One bad move, you're all washed up. Take us down to the jailhouse, huh? That's right. I don't mind saying I jolly well don't like that gun pressed against my side. You'll like it a lot less if it goes off. Well, that's a sweet thought. Hold it. Open the door, Packard. Right. Lead the way, Sweeney. Come along, you down the steps with you. Now then, across the street. I don't see any police car. Cars across the park. You mean in front of Sonny's house? Yeah. We stopped there for you, found out you'd gone over to the hospital. Now then, through the park. First time I've had a chance of taking an errand with an escort for a long time now. How much you get for acting as a fella's bodyguard, Sweeney? You talk too much for your own good. No. But honest, fella, do you like being a policeman? I do that. And I get a chance to pick up such as you. Oh, now, I ain't such a bad fella. You might even get to like me if you know me. Mm, I have my own opinion on that. Keep marching. Sure. What's the matter with your copper, Reggie? Ain't heard a word out of him. He hasn't said anything. I think he's got laryngitis. <laughs> yeah? Well, what makes you think that? Well, he's got a woolen cloth about his neck, and he smells violently of turpentine and cough medicine. Laryngitis, huh? Crying. I've been telling him he should be home in bed, but the blighter doesn't appreciate my sympathy. Ouch, I say. Hey, what's the matter? Apparently doesn't appreciate my humor either. Keeps jabbing that valley gun in my ribs. All right. This is it. You mean this car under the streetlights? That's right. Open the back door, sweetie. But this isn't a police car. You don't say. Look here, there's something phony about this. You mean these birds ain't policemen? Get into that back seat. What about it, Jack? Yes, get in. But if this is a frame-up... Get in. Follow him in, Sweeney. Sure. If you sit in the middle, I'll take the outside. Suits me. Now you, Limey. Jack, if this is... Get a... in, Rizzy. Quiet. Follow him in, Burke. Well, anyway, Reggie, you and me get to ride next to each other. Is that important? Well, anyway, I like back seat riding best myself. All snug is four doggone bugs in a rug. 
All right, Packard, in the front seat. Suits me. Keep your other gun on him while I get under the wheel, Sweeney. He's covered right up to his eyes. I take it we're going for a nice long ride. Take it or leave it alone. You know, Jack, if these three hombres, sure enough, ain't cops, it looks to me like we've got a mighty interesting ride ahead of us. Looks like it, all right. Keep the gun on him, Sweeney, until I get the car underway. It's as good as done. Hey, ask him up there if he's a good driver, Jack. Well, here we go. Smooth running, bus. All right, Sweeney, I'll take care of Packard up front here. He's your boy. Whew! Your fella does smell a turpentine, don't he, Reg? Mm. He's smelling up the whole car. If <laughs> I'm not mistaken, this road takes us out toward the desert. You ain't mistaken, mister. I thought so. Three bodies buried in the sand out there probably would never be discovered. Jack, don't talk like that. What's that? Well, that's something I don't ever want to be. The undiscovered corpse. That Texas boy's just full of bad jokes, ain't he? Uh, Doc? No, don't mind him. He's worse than a leaky faucet. Yeah. You boys look to me like part of a pretty well-organized gang. We're doing all right. You uh, wouldn't by any chance know a man by the name of Leslie Marks, would you? Who? Oh? Leslie Marks, attorney. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. I'm not surprised. Looks like a pretty smart operator. Should think he'd make a great mouthpiece for a gang. I'll tell the boss. He wouldn't be boss by any chance, would he? What do you mean? Marks. He wouldn't be the big gang boss in these parts, would he? Got a great front for it. You're nuts. Well, there's no harm in asking. You can't think of any. Well, what's your racket? This doesn't seem to me any sort of a town for an organized gang. You got me, buddy. You mean you don't know? I don't know nothing. I see. Of course, you're close to the Mexican border. I suppose there's money in smuggling, and then this is a seaport. Keep talking. It's only your breath you're wasting. Uh Uh-huh. How are we coming, Jack? We're getting out into the great open spaces. Are, huh? I say, how about opening some of the windows? I'm getting bloody sick of breathing turpentine, too. Leave the windows like they are. Oh, spoiling my whole ride. Reggie, I bet you if we was to touch a match to your bodyguard, he'd burn like an oil well. Or you could attach a pipeline to him and furnish Southern California with natural gas. Out, I say, old man. I'm getting fairly well fed up with you jabbing me with that brute of a gun. <laughs> yeah, Burke ain't a man to take a joke kindly. Mm. At least why it's not when it's on himself. Yes, I'm beginning to notice that. So we're really out in the desert now. I haven't seen a building along the highway for the past five minutes. Pricing any automobiles? Not now. There's a car on our tail, though. What's that? I don't know. Been there ever since we left town. I'll take care of that. Hooey! Looky at us go! <laughs> Leaving it behind like it was standing still. This car's got an engine in it, all right. I say, the other car's out of sight already. Doc. Reggie, can you hear me? Yeah, I know. Get ready for the worst. What'd you say? I told him to get ready for the worst. What do you mean by that? You keep on going like this and almost anything's liable to happen. Such as what? Such as this. Hey, let go of that wheel! Look out, Doc! Reggie! Hey! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Doc. Doc, you... You all right? Jack. Oh. Did you honest and truly go for to wreck this car? Yes, I yanked on the wheel. Son, you had never ought to do that. Well, this here's the way folks get hurt. Ah, you, you see, Reggie? Huh? What do you mean? Isn't he back there with you? Feller, when this, bu- this bus done its first flip-flap, Reggie zoomed out of here like he shot from a cannon. Well, let's get out of here and find him. Ah, I reckon I'm going to need some help. What about these other guys? Well, they'll have to look out for themselves now. Car's over inside. Can't you climb out through the back door? Uh, nope. Door's jammed. Uh-huh. Well, climb over in the front seat, and I'll give you a hand. Okay. There. Ah. Ah. Oh. Ah, stepped right in the middle of a driver. Uh, he didn't notice it. Yeah, sleeping like a babe. Be careful of that broken glass. Now. Up with you. Yep. Uh. Uh. There we are. Ah. Uh. Ah. Hey, Jack, huh? there's a headlights of that car that was following us over yonder in the highway. Oh, never mind that. Find Reggie. Yeah, he should ought to be over this way. Oh, is that you over there, Jack? Hey, Jack, it's Sonny. Sonny, what are you doing out here? Jack, Jack what happened? 
Uh, Ashley, what you were doing out here? I followed you. The minute those three policemen took you boys out of Phil's room, I followed. I thought they were going to take you to the police station. They weren't policemen. They they weren't? Jack, what are you looking for? Reggie. Oh, is he hurt? I'll tell you better when we find him. Hey, Jack! Hey, here he is! Oh, come on. Oh, you see... You see the horrible things that are happening to you already from associating with me? Well, that's stupid. Here, this way, Jack. How is he, Doc? Can you tell? Well, he's knocked out all right, but he lit in these here bushes. I don't think there's nothing broken. Oh, I hope not. Here, let me see. What the heck are you doing out here, Sonny? I trailed you. Who were those men if they weren't policemen? Gun-toting gangsters. Uh, how's he doing, Jack? Just stunned. He'll be around in a minute. Uh, are you sure? Certainly I'm sure. All I have to say, Sonny, is that the Richard curse is a pretty impotent curse to let us get away like this. Well, what do you mean? Well, look at the material it had to work with. Three gunmen with murder in their hearts, one of the best auto wrecks of the year. A really potent curse would have had us dead and buried by this time. Yeah, and look at us. Just one of us with a little old bump on his head. Well, you mustn't say that. You mustn't challenge fate like that. Baloney. Come on. Let's have a look at the boys in the car. All right to leave Reggie there? Yes, give him a few minutes to come around. But who are these... These gunmen. Your guess is as good as ours. Doc, I'm going to crawl back in the car and hand the bodies out to you. Okay. The thing we didn't catch fire. I still don't understand why gunmen wanted you three. Well, won't you let us worry about that, honey? Are you inside all right, fella? Yeah. Here comes the driver. Okay. Careful with him. He's got some broken bones. Uh, got him. A meaty guy for his size. Ah. Ah. Yeah, lay there for a minute. He, he's not dead. No, ma'am. Just chewed up a little. Next. Now, let him come. Uh, which one's he? Sweeney. You got him? Yep, yep. Come on, Sweeney, old kid. The trip ended up kind of different. You expected, didn't it? Ah. Ah, that's it. Lay down there beside your pal. Can I do anything? I don't reckon. Uh, these fellas is going to need the attention of an expert. They're hurt seriously? Well, they ain't been done no good. Ready, Doc? Well, this would be old laryngitis himself, huh? Well, I got him. Ah. Ah. Oh. See, you fella. Now that you're unconscious, you're exuding turpentine worse than when you was kicking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that's over. But what do we do now? Load our cargo into your car and get him to a hospital. And that's a job of toting. I wish Reggie had come, too, so he could give us a hand. Well, hadn't we ought to hurry if there is... All any... right. Uh, uh, stick up your hands, all of you. What's that? Hey, Jack, we got visitors. You heard me? Not a move out of any one of you. Guns and everything. Now, now, what you suppose this is for? But there must be some mistake. Keep out of this, sister. What's the idea? We came out here tonight to bury you, Muggs. And burying's what you're going to get. <laughs> transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller
Take them up. Would you like a chunk of lead in your middle? Well, not me, fella. Then don't move a finger. Hoppy. That's me. I got them covered. Fan them. Sure, with pleasure. Don't waste no time. This ain't no picnic. What about the skirt? No, don't you touch me. Leave the skirt alone. It's a nice skirt. Leave the skirt alone. Well, ain't that what I'm doing? These guys ain't got no rods. I could have told you that. He could have told us that. Ain't he the comedian? Hey, look, my arms is getting tired. Keep them up. Hoppy. Shall I bump them off? No, tie them up. Well, what do we want to tie them up for? We come out here to bump them off. We can't bump nobody off in the presence of the skirt. We could if we bumped the skirt off, too. We ain't got no orders to bump no skirt off. Yeah, besides, she's a nice skirt. Ain't you, babe? You keep your hands off me. Oh, it's good with a temper. Uh, happy, tie them birds up. May I make a suggestion? No, you can't make no suggestion. Well, then may I ask a question? No, you can't ask no question. Well, your three pals here are liable to die on your hands if you don't get them to a doctor. You mean they're height bad? Yes. That's their hard luck. Yeah, but if they're height bad... That's uh... their hard luck. We got our orders to bump these three guys off and bury them. Three? That's orders. Yeah, but it's only two of them. Ah, that's right. Hey, where's the other mug? Well, I can tell you that, fella. Yes, yes, we we can tell you where he is. He's in that wrecked car, dead. Yeah? Yes, dead. And you can blame yourselves for it. Well, ain't that too bad now? We think so. Well, don't feel too bad, mister. His troubles is all over. And you still got yours coming. Well, what are you standing there for, Hoppy? I told you to tie them up. That's right. I thought there was something you told me to do. I was trying to remember. We'll do it. Shall I tie up the skirt first? Leave the skirt alone. Oh, ain't we going to tie up the skirt at all? No. That's too bad. I sure would like to tie up that skirt. Put your hands behind you, bud. Oh, how about it, Jack? He's got a gun on us. Well, I sure don't like it. Why, you double-jointed city cat. Put your hands behind you. Better someday I'm going to take you apart. That's better. Put your hands up, both of you. Hey, the skirt's got a gun. Sonny, you crazy little idiot, drop that gun. I won't. I can shoot as good as he can. Drop that gun, sister, or I will make a sieve out of you. I won't. I'll shoot if you do. Happy. A gun-toting skirt. Take that gun away from her. You mean I can go for her? Get that gun. With pleasure. No. No, don't come any closer. I ain't mixed with a skite never so long. Sonny, throw the gun away. You hear? Throw it away. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, yeah. let go of me. Give me that rock. I won't. I won't. Yeah, you got the gun. Yeah, and I also got the skite. Now, hurry up and put the ropes on these two guys so we can get going. I told you not to try to use that gun. Somebody's got to do something. Sonny, it's just like I told Arthur the other night. When you pull out a gun, you got to shoot right off. On the count of folks, they just don't monkey around a shooting arm. Now put your arms back of you, and this time do it. And don't waste no more time. We got to get out of here. Doc. Yeah? I think the British are coming. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. No fooling. No fooling. What are they talking about, Hoppy? One of them just said the British are coming. Oh, what does that mean? Search me. I got one of them tied. Well, hurry up with the other one. Yes, won't be long now. And me all tied up like a sack of potatoes. It's all right, I'm still free. But not for long. Put your hands behind you. Get him, Reggie. I've got him, Jack. Hey, Hoppy. I'll take your hoppy. Hey, look out. Had a boy, Jack. You got him first crack. How are you coming, Reggie? Oh, I went down like a pole, Doc. Nothing to it at all. But Reggie, you were unconscious. Ooh, oh, I said I didn't have to stay that way, did I? Well, good work, fella. You come to you. Took in the situation, and you did just what was right and proper. Right. Ooh, still a bit dizzy, though. Well, after that bump you got in the wreck, it's not surprising. Sure, I did take a flying, didn't I? What about those other chappies? Well, we've got to get them to a hospital. Only now we got five bodies instead of just three. And by the way, would somebody get these ropes off of oh, me? All right, I'll turn around. Yeah. Uh, where do you suppose those, uh, these last two guys come from anyway, Jack? Well, you heard what they said. Yeah, that they was out here to bury There you are. Huh. Yeah, thanks. Apparently, there were two more of the same gang that had been waiting out here in the desert for the others to bring us along. Right. Then there was to be a firing squad, and we were to be thrown into a hole in the sand and covered up. No. Hey, honey, what you shivering about? Oh, what is it? What's going on? Well, Sonny, it looks to me as though we were beginning to get under the surface of the Richard curse. But what's this to do with the curse? Maybe a lot. I don't understand. 
Well, supposing I'd been shot in the park the other night, or the three of us had disappeared, or our bodies had been found out here in the desert. What would you have thought? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. If you hadn't known all that's happened, you'd have said the Richard curse had caused our deaths. You'd have believed we died because we were associated with you. Yes, but this is different. Someone's deliberately trying to kill you. All the others have been accidental. Been made to look accidental, you mean? You, you mean... I mean that I think this same gang that tried to lay us away tonight are responsible for at least some of the deaths that took place before we came into the picture. But that's not a curse. Hardly. Hey, where'd Doc and Reggie go? They're taking the bodies over to my car on the highway. Oh. But, Jack, why? What do you mean, why? If a gang of men are killing people close to me, there must be some reason for it. Yes, and we're going to start looking for that reason. But the curse... There isn't any curse, and there never has been. Oh, but you're wrong. It's been in my family for generations. Who told you that? My father. You might have found something better to do. When did he tell you? Well, he didn't exactly tell me. He left it for me in a letter attached to his will. Your father's attorney, Leslie Marks, gave you that letter when the will was read? Yes, Leslie gave it to me. Was it in your father's handwriting? No, it was typewritten, but it was signed. I know my father's signature. And you didn't know anything about the curse until you read that letter? No. Do you still have the letter? Yes. Yes, I have it at home. Hmm. I'd like to have a look at it when we get back. Well, if, if you wish. Do you know the condition of your estate? But that's absurd. Leslie... It's not absurd. Nothing's absurd when people are being killed like flies around you. And I don't trust that Marks fellow any further than I could throw an elephant by the tail. But if he wanted my estate, it would be me he wanted dead, wouldn't it? Well, you're the last person in the world he'd want dead. Especially if he's been looting the estate. No, I, I, I don't understand. Because if you were dead, he'd have to make an accounting to the court. And if he's been using your money, he'd go to jail for it. Oh. Oh, yes. But that still doesn't explain why he'd want the men close to you out of the way. No. No, I think you're all wrong about Leslie. I'm sure of it. Unless he... Look, Sonny, did your father's will say anything about all property reverting to you immediately in case you got married? No. Merely that Leslie was to be my executor until I'd reached the age of 25. Why, why did you say that? Well, if he had to turn the estate over to you when you married, then naturally he'd do everything in his power to drive off all eligible men. But my marrying doesn't change a thing. Oh, so we can forget that. Well, this is going to take some thinking over. Well, Jack, if, if you can really prove it isn't the curse... I've already done that to my satisfaction. But proof. I want to be convinced. I've got to. Well, you better stop worrying about the curse and start worrying about something really serious. Serious? Yes, and it's my guess that it's Leslie Marks. Jack, I know you're mistaken. I know you are. Well, somebody's surrounding you with gangsters and gunmen. Somebody's bound and determined you're going to live alone and like it. You proved that tonight. Well, I don't understand it. Oh, but you're beginning to believe it, aren't you? Well, I, I don't know. You were going to marry Phil Terry. Where's he? Cripple in the hospital. You're beginning to show an interest in Roger and in Freddie. Where are they? Buried. You and I announced our engagement. With good luck, I'm still here, but that wasn't because someone didn't try to slow me up. Yes. Yes, there's something. Well, there isn't something. It's somebody. And from now on, we don't let up until we run him down. Well, who are we going to oh. run down now? Oh, it's you, Doc. Yeah. And while you two been a-standing there gabbing, me and Reggie done ourselves a job. Get all the bodies loaded in the car? Yeah, no thanks to you. <laughs> okay, let's get started back to town. I don't know where anyone's going to sit. The entire back is occupied by the unconscious. Well, that's okay. Sonny can drive. You ride in the front seat with her, Reggie. Doc and I'll hang on the running board. Hey, what's Reggie done to get a break like that? He got thrown out of the wreck on his head. And a little thing like that gets him the front seat back to town? Oh, I say, Doc, you take it. I should say not. You're riding with me, Reggie. <laughs> Get in. Thank you. Right on. And that settles that. We ready to start? Yes, yeah, start the motor. Oh, here, wait a minute. Hey, what's the matter now? Uh, just a minute. I've got to get back to the wreck. Say, what's that for? Darned if I know. Got some kind of a bee in his bonnet. Hmm. Think we should go, too? Oh, I don't reckon. Uh, Sonny. Yes? I heard some of the things Jack said to you. You convinced now that this here little old Richard curse of yours is a lot of hogwash? Oh, I want to. Well, then just go ahead and believe it, because it's true. It's so mixed up. But I will tell you this. Yeah? There's been a knot of fear twisted up in my stomach for, for almost a year now. And for the first time, it isn't there anymore. Now you're talking, Paul. Oh, here he comes back. Ah, it didn't take him long. But what'd you go back for, fella? Sonny. Sonny, this may be important. What's the matter? Do you know a man named Donald Robert Lincoln? 
Donald Robert Link? Yes, think hard. I don't have to. Of course I know. Who is he? What is he? He's one of the richest men in San Diego. Yes, but what connection has he got with you? Oh, I don't know. He was a friend of my father's in the old days. He was? How close a friend? Why, next to Leslie Marks, the closest friend he had, I think. Great. Now we're getting somewhere. But what does Donald Robert Lincoln have to do with this? That's his automobile that's wrecked over there. Hey. Oh, no, Jack. Y- you mean he's head of the gang that tried to take us for a ride tonight? That's what we're going to ask him. Oh, but it couldn't. It couldn't be, Mr. Lincoln. I'll know more about that when we've had a little talk with the old boy. <laughs> transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. adventure thriller Bill, you should have seen that wrecked car. It's a wonder anyone came out alive. Well, that's mighty funny. I'm especially interested in how it happened that Jack, Doc, and Reggie came through that wreck with hardly a scratch, and the three gunmen ended up with busted heads and broken bones. Just a lucky chance, I guess. Oh, okay, hardly that. What do you mean, York? Well, it's all very simple. You see, we were expecting the accident and were ready for it, and the other three men weren't. Are you kidding? No, not at all, Phil. That's the way it was. Well, will you tell me how you can get ready for an auto wreck? I don't mind. It's the principle, you know, of centrifugal force. I mean to say, when a speeding car spins and turns over, it's a bit like a whirling phonograph record. Anything near the outer edges flies off, but the nearer the center of the spin you are, the less violent the action. Reggie, how do you get to the center of a whirling, crashing automobile? Well, the chap in the front seat lies down on the floor and wedges himself up under the dashboard, his knees braced against the front seat. And the man in the back seat should drop to the floor and cling to the footrest. That really works? Well, you're still taking a belly lot of chances, of course, but Jack, Doc, and I have come through at least three such wrecks that way. I wish someone had told me that a year ago before I went over the cliff. Quiet. I wish they had. I told you before not to use that tone of voice to me. I hate sympathy. I'm sorry. You haven't told me yet where Doc Long and Jack Packard are. Well, we'll have to tell you everything that's happened in the last two hours for you to understand. Never mind. Tell me that later. Where are they now? Doc is down at the police emergency hospital... Jack's gone to see Mr. Donald Robert Lincoln. Donald Robert Lincoln? Yes. You mean old money bags, Lincoln? Yes. Why? What's Packard got to do with him? Does he expect... Who's that? Shall I go to the door and see? Who is it? It's uh, Leslie Marks, Phil. Leslie? I didn't expect to find anyone else here. If uh, I'm intruding... Of course he's not intruding, is he, Phil? No, no. As long as you're here, you might as well stay. Thanks, Phil. And cut the fill stuff, Marks. My last name's Terry. Very well, Terry. Why the sudden visit? You're surprised? Well, why shouldn't I be? First time you've been to see me since I came to this hospital. Well, Terry, as a matter of fact, I came to see you about Sonny here. Sonny? What do you mean, Leslie? Why did you come to see Phil about me? Well, if you must know, Sonny, I wanted to discuss your engagement to Jack Packard with Phil. Why should you do that? Yeah, why should I discuss Sonny's engagement to another man with you, Marks? I certainly don't intend to say anything in front of the present group, especially York here. Fine. 
Would you like me to leave? You stay right where you are, Reggie. What about it, Phil? Yeah, yeah, stick around. By the way, Marks, Reggie and Sonny were just telling me a little story when you came in. Maybe you'd like to hear it, too. Maybe I would. Go ahead. Leslie, did you know that three men in police uniforms came in here a couple of hours ago and they pretended to arrest Jack, Doc, and Reggie? Uh, what's that? Quite. For the murder of Fish Evans. Uh, no, I didn't know that. Well, then, of course, you didn't know that when those officers got the boys outside, they turned out to be three gunmen intent on taking them for a ride. Uh, are you being serious? Bloody serious, Marks. Go ahead. Tell them what happened, Reggie. They loaded us into a car and took us out on the desert. They had our final resting place all picked out for us, and just before we arrived, Jack reached over and spun the steering wheel and wrecked the car. Deliberately wrecked a speeding car? Right. Well, what happened? Well, our three captors were knocked about a bit. Jack, Doc, and I escaped with minor bruises. That's remarkable. Not at all. We knew how to protect ourselves. But if you wrecked the car, how did you get back to town so quickly? Uh, how far out were you? No. Ten or fifteen miles, I should judge. Fortunately, Sonny here had the good sense to trail our car. Sonny, you did that? Yes. I see. And what became of the gunmen? Well, we were on the point of landing them into Sonny's car and returning to town when two more of the ballet brutes showed up. What's that? You didn't tell me that. And we hadn't got that part of the story yet. They threw guns on us and seemed intent on completing the execution. They were part of the same gang? Apparently. You were there at that time, Sonny? Yes. One of them was in favor of killing me, too. Killing you? Sonny, in heaven's name, child, supposing that they had killed you. Well, supposing they had. No, no, Sonny. You've got to have a guard after this. I've got all the guard I need. You haven't any guard at all. Jack, Doc, and Reggie are doing pretty well. Never mind that. What happened? The boys went to work on them. That's what happened. But they were dangerous killers. No, they weren't so dangerous when Jack and Reggie finished with them. I see. Uh, York. Yes, Mr. Marks. You men seem to know your business. If you're talking about fighting, I agree with you. Yes. But I suppose there was a certain element of luck in your favor. It takes more than luck. Just look at you. So you had five bodies to bring in instead of three. The whole back of my car was full of bodies. You should have seen the police sergeant's eyes bug out when we brought him out to the car. What do you have to say? We told him we'd picked up the five in an auto accident out on the desert. And uh, we thought he might be interested. I say, yes. He took one look at them and we were his friends for life. What do you mean by that? Well, it seems that three of our bodies were very badly wanted for smuggling across the Mexican border. He said that? He said more than that. One of them is wanted on an old murder charge, and the other one is wanted by the federal men on a narcotic indictment. Quite a haul. Uh, after that, you boys should have a pretty fine standing with the police in this part of the state. Oh, you think they won't? Well, we'll know more about that when Doc gets back. He's still down there giving them our story. Uh, they let you two go? Yes, we wanted to get back up here and relieve Phil's mind. See, it all started right here in the room, and I, I knew Phil would be worried. He's thoughtful of you. You said Doc Long was at the station. Uh, where's Jack Packard? Oh, we dropped Jack off at Donald Robert Lincoln's. Donald Robert. You dropped Packard off where? That's right, at Mr. Lincoln's home. Oh, why? Well, Jack made a very interesting discovery. I, I, I don't see any reason for keeping it to ourselves, do you, Sonny? No, he didn't say to keep it secret. Great. We discovered the car used by the gangsters and carting us out to the desert was one belonging to Mr. Lincoln. What are you saying? Bit of a blow, huh? The gangster's car belonged to Donald Robert Lincoln? And Packard's gone to beard the man in his den? Oh, Jack can take care of himself. Wasn't he a friend of your father's, Sonny? Yes. He'd better be able to take care of himself. That fellow Lincoln is no one to play around. I realize you're only the butler and you have your orders, but I'll give you one more chance. Do I get in to see Donald Robert Lincoln? No. Well, you asked for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's no time to argue. And I better roll you behind the curtain so as not to upset the household. There you are. Sleep sweet. Yeah, let's see now. He said the library. This should be it. Jenkins, I said I didn't want to be disturbed. Stop it! I was fiddling with that door. If you look up from your work, you might be surprised. What's that? Yes. Who are you? What are you doing in my library? I don't get up. How did you get in here? Jenkins! No use calling for Jenkins. He's sound asleep on the floor behind the drapes in the hall. Is... Is this a robbery? No. Then get out. Not yet. We've got some talking to do. People don't enter my house at will. You'll be behind bars before you're 24 hours older. Maybe. Now will you let me talk for a minute? Well, 
Say it and get out. Mr. Lincoln, you're one of the most prominent men in this section of the state. What of it? You have a good name, wife, two or three nearly grown children. What are you getting at? It'd be a pretty terrific thing to have that good name come tumbling down in ruins, wouldn't it? I'm beginning to see. You are? Blackmail. Wrong again. So you say. Lincoln, do you own a big black Roadmaster car? I do. Where is it? In my garage, naturally. No, it isn't. I say it is. And I say it isn't. I was round looking in your garage before I came in to see you. Just a minute. We'll see about this. Hello, Higgins. Is the Roadmaster in the garage? It's not. Well, where... Oh. All right, that's all. I was mistaken. The car's in the service garage down at the corner having new tires put on it. No, it isn't. I say it is. I'll lay you a bet of a hundred to one it's not. Say, who are you? What do you care where my car is? A hundred to one. Take it. I should be dialing the police station instead of a garage. <laughs> but I notice you're dialing the garage. Hello, service garage. This is Donald Robert Lincoln talking. You've got my roadmaster down there putting new tires on it? It's there now? You're sure about that? That's all I want to know. The car's down there just as I said it was. Now get out of here. They told you that at the garage? They did. But either they lied like thieves or else you're putting up a mighty good front. If you've got anything to say, say it and get out. Very well, I I'm will. I'm a busy man. Tonight, three gunmen took three men for a ride out on the desert. The car was completely demolished. That car was your roadmaster. Are you from police headquarters? No. Are you from the insurance company? No. Are you one of the gunmen? No, I'm one of the men who was taken on that ride. What are you doing here? Well, first I want to know why gangsters are using your car. If what you say is true, then the car must have been stolen from the service garage. But they said the car was still there. Then they must be in collusion with the gangsters. Maybe. Next, I want to know what your relationship with Sonny Richards is. Sonny Richards? Now, don't tell me you don't know her, because I know you do. You were a close friend of her father, James Richards. You... you're talking about his daughter? I am. I haven't seen the girl since her father's death. You have no interest in the financial side of her estate? I believe that is handled in its entirety by Leslie Marks, her attorney. You know Marks? Yes. What kind of a man is he? He has a reputation beyond reproach. Lincoln, there's something that stinks the high heaven in this neighborhood. I wonder if it isn't you. You, you. Get out of my house. Your reputation and wealth would go a long way toward covering up any dirty work you might be engaged in. Go on, keep talking. You might very easily be... Get him, Higgins! What? Oh! transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. adventure thriller
sure. Where do you suppose this goes to? Blacker than the inside of your hat. Never mind. Spider. Yeah? Get that flashlight on him. Sure. Why don't we finish the job right here and get on our way? Make too much noise. Where do we get down to the basement? Yeah. So that's where we're going. Down in the basement. Looks like it. Come on, Donham. Stops with you. But it's dark down there, fellas. Spider's got the flash on you. What more do you want? Well, I can't see where I'm walking. For all I know, I'm stepping off in space. You heard me. Get going. Come on, Doc. Well, if you say so, Jack. Listen, Doc. Yeah? Dive down the stairs. Dive? Come on, come on, move along. We ain't got all day. Get out of the beam of that flashlight. We'll have to take a chance. Ain't we liable to bust something? We'll have to chance it. Hit that spot on them, Spider. Let's go. Spider, come on, get after Doc. Doc, you hurt me. Where are you? I'm okay. Come on, there must be an outside basement door. Yeah, let's go. Tiptoes, keep it quiet. Hey, hey, Spider, where are you? There I am. Well, keep with me with that flashlight. As long as we can keep out of the flash, we're okay. Here, here's the door. Ah, boy. Door. Locked. No key? No. Look up. Throwing that light around, crouch down. I see some junk over yonder. You think we can get behind it? Let's try. Come on. Well, they got to be down here. There ain't no way for them to get out. I told you we should have pumped them upstairs. Did you lock the door at the top of the stairs like I told you? Yeah. Then there ain't no way they can get out. They gotta be hiding around here, back to some of this junk. I thought this house was empty. Sure. And hey, what's all this stuff doing down here? Well, somebody's using it for a storeroom, looks like. Let them have it the minute you spot them. Yeah, like hunting jackrabbits in a brush. Hey, hey, swing your flash over that way. Hmm, door. Must be another room. Yeah, furnace room, maybe. Let's have a can. Oh, practically standing right on top of us. Yeah. Now we got a minute breather while we're in there. Can you do anything but opening that door? Well, I can try. Well, hurry up. Make it quiet. Yeah. You stay here. Wait. Huh? Too late. Here comes the flashlight. Hey, fella. Well, what are we going to do? Just lie here under this stuff and let them dig us out? You got any suggestions? Well, I don't aim to be shot down without a fight. Hold it. Here they come. Let's jump them when they get close enough. All right. Wait until the last minute, though. Well, there's nothing to do but kick around in this junk until we find it. Yeah, wait till the boss hears about this. He ain't going to hear unless you shoot off your mouth. Them guys are here and we're going to find them. Giving us a split. <laughs> Jack, who, what was that? Who, who done that? Someone shot through that basement window. Shot at two gunmen? Looks like it. See if you can find Spider's flashlight. Yeah. Well, what do you suppose happened? A gang war? Oh, never mind that. Help me find that flashlight. Yeah. Dag nabbit. Now what's the matter? Oh, I fell over one of them gun toters. Hey, hey, here it is. Well, you got the flash? Yeah. Okay to turn it on? Well, let's chance it. There, give it here. Yeah. There. Holy jumping toad frog. Look at it. Hold that flash a minute. Uh huh. Hey, fella. Those two look like they've been shot with a box of tacks. Sawed off shotgun from a distance. Sawed off shotgun, huh? Yes, from that distance they were sprayed with shot. Neither one of them's badly hurt. They sure are unconscious, so. though. They won't be for long. Get some of that rope over there and help me tie them up. You gonna take them with us? No, we can't be bothered. Yeah. Here's some rope. All right, go to work. Yeah. How far is Sonny's house from here, do you know? Oh, middle of the next block over, way I figure it. Good. <laughs> hey, coming with your man. Yeah, I got his feet tied up. Working on his hands. Step on it. Yeah. Hey, uh, what do you want to know about Sonny's house for? That's where we're going. We are? Ah, well, there he is. All right, come on. We've wasted too much time now. Hey, uh, didn't you hear Spider say that he had locked the door at the head of the stairs? I got the key. Hurry up. Wait a minute. Come on. What are we in such a hurry about? I'll tell you later. Outside with you. We take in the car? Might as well. I'll drive. Get in. Go to it, fella. Turn here, Jack. I don't 
see Sonny's house? There she is, in the next block. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, pile out. Let's go. I got the key, fella. Where to now? Upstairs to Arthur's room. To Arthur? Well, what's the kid got to do with this? Uh, he's in bed with broken arm. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. Come on. That's his room. Yeah. Who's that? Hello, Arthur. Shut the door, Doc. Yeah. What are you fellas doing here? Well, Arthur, son, we live here. Yeah? Yes. We uh, just dropped in to see how you were feeling. So what? So we'd like to have you tell us. Yeah? Yes. Oh, what's this telephone doing in this room? Sonny brought it up for me. It just plugs into the wall. Mm Mm-hmm. Mind if I use it? There's other telephones in the house. But I want to use this one. Well, go on and use it, then. Thanks. Who are you calling, Jack? Police department. What's that for? You interested, Arthur? Say, you mugs. If you think you've got anything on me... Shut up. Hello? Uh, give me Captain Norton. Yeah, Norton. If you think you've got anything on me... You said that before, son. Hold it. Captain Norton? This is Jack Packard. What's that? What do you mean, where did we vanish to? <laughs> That's so? And never mind that. Listen. There's a big brownstone house at 1637 Sunshine Boulevard. Yes, 1637. Well, if you'll send an ambulance around to that address, you might find something that'll interest you very much in the basement. Yeah, in the basement. Me? Oh, I'm at Sonny Richard's house at the moment. No, not for long. I'll be going over to Phil Terry's room at the hospital in a few minutes. Okay. Get that ambulance out in a hurry. Bye. And that slapped. What are you trying to do? Take me for a ride? <laughs> Scared the pants off of you, didn't we, kid? Nuts. I thought you'd be interested in that conversation, Arthur. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Because two men were shot over there with a sawed-off shotgun. Yeah? Yeah. Well, what about it? I thought maybe you could tell us uh, what about it. Are you crazy? Well, I don't think so. Well, what should I know about two mugs getting shot? I'm I'm laying here in bed with a broken arm. Mm Mm-hmm. Doc. Yeah? Pull the covers off him. Hey, what's the idea? Jack said to pull the covers off you, fella. You let me alone. There. Hey, Jack. He's got his clothes on. So I see. You two cheap gangsters. Now, never mind that. Why are you in bed with your clothes on? Because I feel like it. Just plain like to sleep that way, huh, fella? Got his shoes on, too, uh, Nope, no shoes. And I haven't had any on. I I was cold, so I put on some clothes and I got back into bed. Mm-hmm. This your closet? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's your shoes, all right. That's what I've been telling you. Your shoes, all right, Arthur, only... You haven't been telling us the truth. Oh, yes, I have. No, because the inside of the shoes are still warm from having been worn. Well. Well, what? So it was your face I saw at the basement window of that other house. Hey, Jack. It was, wasn't it, Arthur? I ain't talking. Jack, you mean it was Arthur here who sprayed them two guys with a shotgun? That's right. Arthur, you sure enough done that? I ain't talking, I said. But, fella, you may be saved our lives. Who cares about that? (laughs) Well, son, I do, for one. Well, that isn't the question. What I want to know is, why did you do it? Do what? Now, look, Arthur, that's just being silly. We know you did it, so stop acting. Yeah? What do you know about those men? How did you know they were taking us there? That's funny. Sounds just as though I hear somebody talking. Well, doing what you done made things a lot easier for us, fella. Why don't you come clean and maybe we could make it easier for you? I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I guess there's nothing else to do. What do you mean? We thought maybe you'd like to keep this a secret. Yeah? Yes. But if you're not going to talk, we'll have to discuss it with Sonny and your brother Phil. No, no, you ain't telling nothing to Sonny and Phil. You don't want them to know? That's all I ask. Don't tell Sonny and Phil. Why not, you heard what Phil said to me. You heard him say if he ever heard of me with a gun again, he'd turn me over to the cops. But, fella, 
You said you didn't know nothing about it. I don't. I don't, but if you tell Phil, he, he'll think I did. Son, it looks to me like you're almighty afraid of your brother Phil. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm his brother. I know. <laughs> Further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. adventure thriller Phil, I hope you don't mind us using your room for a conference hall. The pleasure's all mine, Packer. Anything to break the monotony. As long as we don't tire you. When I get tired, Sonny, you'll hear about it. That's a promise. Arthur... Yes, Phil? Where's the wheelchair? I'm through with that baby carriage stuff. Yeah? How's the arm? It's in a cast. How do I know? Well, are we all here? No. No, we're waiting for Leslie Marks. Sonny's attorney? What's he got to do with this? Well, he's in on this with the rest of us. Oh, Reggie. Yes, Jack? Open that window. We need a little air in here. Mm, Crack. Draft on you, Sonny? No, it smells good. Mmm, fog thick enough out there to spit on your bread. Hey, Long. Talking to me? That's right. What are you sitting over there by the door for? I like it over here. Yeah, I see you do. Why? Just a hunch, I reckon. Doc means he doesn't get caught in the same predicament twice. I still don't get it. The last time we were all together in this room, we had visitors. With guns. Oh, so that's it. That's it, fella. Should visitors come again, uh, we're kind of spread out and fight information. I see. You by the door, Packard here by the bed, and York over by the window. And now you know as much as we do. But that's fantastic. They wouldn't dare try the same thing again. You can't tell what a bunch of torpedoes will do. It's just like I always said. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, uh, well, come on in, fella. It's Leslie Mark. Yes. You were expecting me, I believe? Yes, come in. Have a chair. Hello, Leslie. Good evening, Sonny. How are you, Terry? Don't bother to ask. Very well. How's the arm, Arthur? It's broke. How'd you think it was? Well, all very pleasant. Arthur, that's awful. So what? Phil, you should say something to Arthur about his manners. What's the matter with him? Well, you heard how rude he was to Leslie. Oh, that. Yes, that. Never mind, Sonny. But I do mind you've been a good friend to me, and I don't care what anybody says or thinks. What's that? What? Has someone been saying I haven't been a good friend to you? Oh, I I didn't mean... Sure, Marx. I say it. I see, Terry. That explains a lot of things. It does? Yes. I've noticed an antagonism in you against me, and I never understood it until now. (laughs) He never understood it till now. But if you think I've taken advantage of Sonny in some manner, then naturally I can understand your resentment. That's what I call real deduction. Phil, I'm interested. You keep out of this, Packard. Do you mind telling me why you think Marx is taking advantage of Sonny? And in what way? I said for you to keep out of this. All right, let it go. 
But, Phil, you're wrong. I'm not wrong. Leslie, do you know what Phil's talking about? I think so. Well, for heaven's sake, let's hear it. Phil's disliked me ever since I refused to give you extra money from the estate to maintain him here in this hospital. Oh, no, Leslie. Mark, you said the one thing that you shouldn't ever have said. Nevertheless, Terry, I believe I'm stating facts. Sonny has paid every expense you've incurred since you were injured a year ago, and I might state that there were plenty of expenses. Leslie, I forbid you to say another and word. And furthermore, Terry, Sonny has been keeping this lazy, good-for-nothing brother of yours. What did you call me? Arthur, you shut up. What did you call me, Mark? I called you a lazy, good-for-nothing. Arthur! Arthur! Water glass came with an inch of my hip. I intended for it to brain you. Arthur. I'll kill that tin horn lawyer. Arthur, I'm talking to you. What do you want? Come over here to the bed. Phil. Come over here to the bed. Now then. Phil, don't hit me. Don't hit you. Why, you little baby-faced punk, I got a notion to smear your nose all over your face. You hear me? Phil, let go my collar. You're choking me. What do you mean saying you'll kill anybody? Answer me. What do you mean by it? Phil, you're choking me. Oh, Phil, That's please. somebody, punk. You heard what he said about us. And I told you to stay out of it, didn't I? But you can't do anything. You're a cripple, Phil. <laughs> oh, Phil. Don't ever say that to me again. You yeah. hear? Yes, Phil. Now go and sit down. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what everybody thinks. I'm a cripple. Well, supposing I am. Oh, no, Phil. I said supposing I am. Here, Arthur, drink this. Make your throat feel better. All right. Well, isn't anybody going to answer me? Phil, we're getting entirely away from the matter we gathered here to discuss. What do I know about what you came here to discuss? You called the meeting? Yes. But I haven't had a chance to get a word in edgewise so far. Well, you've got the floor now, haven't you? All right. I suppose you all know by this time that I went out to interview Donald Robert Lincoln and got thrown into jail for my trouble. Yeah, yeah, that was great work. Uh Uh-huh. But I did accomplish one purpose. I've finally given the police a clue to this gang that's been working against us. And what is that? The service garage where Lincoln has work done in his cars is definitely connected with the mob. Hey, Jack, I thought you wasn't supposed to tell that. Well, it's not supposed to be known generally. It's all right among ourselves. The police are watching that garage? Yes, but that's a side issue. What I really wanted to tell you was a little incident that happened to Doc and me last night after we were released from jail. Or rather, I want Doc to tell it. Well, why me, Jack? Never mind. Let's go out. Okay. Well, me and Jack come out of jail and got into Sonny's car that I had parked outside and started for home. When all of a sudden, a couple of torpedoes come up out of the back seat and poke shooting pistols in the backs of her neck. Doc, more gunmen? That's right, Sonny. You boys seem to be plenty unpopular in this town. Ain't it the truth? Well, they made me drive to a big brown stone house over on Sunshine Street, not so far from uh, from here. Then they took us inside. It was their headquarters? No, it wasn't, fella. It was a vacant house. Anyway, from their conversation, they was all set to take us down in the basement and finish up the little jobs their playmates messed up on out on the desert. They, they, they were going to kill you? Well, that was the object of meeting. Only going down the stairs to the basement in the dark, me and Jack done a high dive and got out of the, their spotlight. You did what? They had a flash on us. We dived down the stairs. But you might have been killed. <laughs> well, shucks, a broken neck or hot lead in your gizzard, you're just as dead either way. Anyway, after that, we played hide-and-go-seek for quite a while with them, when all of a sudden, bam, and somebody let them have it with both barrels of a sawed-off shotgun. There was somebody else in the basement, too? No, no. A shot from outside through the basement window. He, he killed them both? Uh-uh. He, he was too far off. He just sprayed them with buckshot. But it's good enough. It played him out long enough for me and Jack to put ropes on him and call the police to come and get him. So now the police have seven members of the gang. Yeah, the five we picked up on the desert and these two mugs. That's an interesting point, don't you think so, Marks? What's that? I, I don't follow you. I mean, if the big boss isn't careful, he's going to just about find himself out of gunmen. Why do you address that to me? I just thought you might have an opinion. There seems to be an insinuation behind your remarks. You haven't an opinion? No. I have. Well, good, Terry. Let's hear it. I'd say offhand the Richard curse that's been given Sonny here so much trouble has turned into a gang fight. It does, doesn't it? In which case, the more gunmen the police round up, the less trouble Sonny's going to have with the curse. I differ with you there, Mark. Why? Because no matter how many mugs we round up, Sonny's not going to have any peace until we put our finger on the leader. Oh, yes, the leader. How do you figure that, Packard? Well, this riffraff we picked up aren't important. They're just doing what they're told. The man we want is the boss who knows why. The man who knows why it's important that every man who comes closely associated with Sonny must be killed off. Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy we've got to get. You 
Do you really believe that's at the bottom of all this trouble? Someone is trying to keep men away from Sonny? I know that's it. But why? That's the thing I can't understand. Why, what difference does it make to anyone who I see or know? Well, if we knew that fella, then we'd probably know who the buzzard was. Wait a minute. Well, Marks? I'm beginning to understand your insinuation a moment ago, Packard. Yes? Anyone interested enough in Sonny to want to keep men away from her would have to be someone close to her. I think so. Don't you? Yes. As her attorney and executor, I'm closer to Sonny than anyone else. Right. I'm the only man who has been close to her over the past year who hasn't been a victim of the curse. Well, let's say the victim of the gang. That's more accurate. Yes. Therefore, I'm the logical man to suspect. Now, that's what I call a beautiful analysis. However, you're wrong. Maybe. And I'll point out the flaw in your reasoning. Go ahead. What have I to lose or gain by Sonny's association with other men? That doesn't prove anything. Somebody's guilty and somebody's got a reason. You may have a secret reason just as much as anyone else. But I haven't. That's what you say. Mm, I, I say, Jack. That's right. You say it has to be someone close to Sonny. It seems logical. Hmm. Well, who is there closely associated with her? I mean, besides Mark's here. Well, there's Phil Terry here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a great candidate. I got the worst deal of anybody so far. At least the others are dead and out of their misery. Phil, dear. And don't call me dear. Don't call you dear. No. But why? Well, you're going to marry Packard, aren't you? Oh, yes. That's why. To, uh, to get back to the subject, after Phil comes Arthur here. Yeah, yeah. He'd make a great leader for a mob, wouldn't he? I'm just naming over possibilities. Little Arthur here sure has all the makings. He won't have when I get through working on him. I'm doing all right. Listen, kid, I'm going to make a man out of you if I have to kill you doing it. Yeah. Now, we're drifting again. I've got one more candidate. Well, who's that, Jack? Donald Robert Lincoln. Oh, but that's absurd, Jack. Mr. Lincoln isn't close to me. He was very close to your father. Supposing this thing reaches Lincoln, back... Lincoln, Lincoln, Packard, I think you've got something there. What do you mean? I just remember something about Donald Robert Lincoln. About six months before Sonny's father was killed, Lincoln and Mr. Richard had a deal. Oh! Leslie! Leslie! Jack! Jack, the shot came through the window. There it goes down the fire escape. Go get him. Doc, go with Reggie. You bet here, you. Here, let me see. Leslie, Leslie. What does anybody care? Arthur, you mustn't say that. Yeah, the mugs had it coming for a long time. Other transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morris, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. adventure thriller Well, at least there's one thing we know that Mark's feller ain't gonna die He's a long way from being dead Close that door when you're in It's quiet but now that we got the library to ourselves, let's give this business a quick going over. Well, I'd say it was about time. Yeah, I don't know which end I'm standing on half the time. Now, before we get into that, 
What about that torpedo? A fella it shot, Marks? Yeah. You only got clean away in the fog. I know that. Either of you get a good look at him? In this weather? Well, fella, the fog's so thick outside. How about it... you, Reggie? Mm, no, not a bit of it. Right on top of the shooting, I looked out the window and saw the ballet blighter going down the fire escape. Now, if I'd had a gun, I could have potted him easily. Didn't see his face at all? No. Mm-hmm. Well, that shooting brought to light a couple of interesting possibilities. Yeah? Yeah, do you recall what Marx was saying just before he was shot? He's crying. You just mentioned Donald Robert Lincoln as a possible leader of the mob that's doing this dirty work. Oh, yeah. And Marx, he just remembered something. Something about a deal between old Moneybags Lincoln and Sonny's papa just before he is shot. Exactly. Could it be that the gunman shot at that particular moment to prevent Marx from finishing what he was about to tell us? Hey. But if that's true then that would just about prove that Lincoln is the chap they were looking for. Yeah, a gunplay to cover up something in Lincoln's past. That's one of the possibilities. Another one is the fact that Leslie Marks was only shot in the shoulder. Huh? What does that prove? Well, doesn't it seem a bit odd that Marks wasn't shot dead? Marks was sitting less than 15 feet from the window. I could have done a better job than that with a slingshot. No, fella, I don't think that proves anything. If all the bad shots in this world was laid end to end, besides that, he was standing on a fire escape and anxious to make his getaway. No, I don't think bad shooting proves a thing. Well, maybe you're right, but uh, listen to my theory anyway. Well, spill it. Well, this is built on the assumption that Leslie Marks is the mob leader. I see, and, and one of his own men shot him? Yeah. You mean they're turning on him? No, it was a plant. We've talked so much about Marks being close to Sonny and not being bothered, he had to do something about it. So what does he do? He plants one of his men on the fire escape with instructions to shoot him in our presence. Mm, Joe, what a chance he was taking. Not if he knew his gunman. Some of these torpedoes can shoot the eyes off a fly. Oh, boy, it'd sure be an alibi hard to beat. Exactly. We saw him shot down. So naturally, he'd be the last man in the world we'd suspect as the gang leader. So now we've got our choice between Lincoln and Marx. Yeah, and I put my money on Lincoln. You don't like my theory about Marx, huh? Well, fella, if you want the truth, I don't. Well, why not? Well, I don't know. I just don't. Sounds just a little bit like something they'd think up in the movies. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? Yeah. Well, maybe you're right. I'd still like to know why the gunman didn't kill Marx at 15 feet, though. Yes, quite. Or why didn't he step into the room and finish up the job proper? None of us was armed. I mean to say, he took a ballet chance making his escape down four stories on the fire escape. Well, uh, don't get me wrong. I still think Marx is a good possibility. And now there's something else that's stuck out in our conversation over there like a sore thumb. Either of you get it? I guess I slipped up. Reggie? Yes, well, as a matter of fact, there was one thing. Yes, I thought you'd get it, because you weren't with Doc and me when we were taken to the brownstone house. Well, I still don't get what you're talking about. Well, you told the story of how the two gunmen held us up and took us down to the basement of the house. Then you said, all of a sudden, bam, somebody shot him with a sawed-off shotgun. Yeah, I remember. Well, Phil asked, was there someone else in the basement? And you said, no, the shot came from the basement window. Yeah? Well... Well, I guess I'm just plain dumb. Oh, don't you see, Doc? The subject was dropped right there. Not a single person in the room asked who fired the shotgun. And all the time, that was the th- thing I wanted to know most. I wasn't there, so naturally I wanted to know if you and Jack knew who fired the shots. Oh, yeah, sure. But well, don't you see? It was just as though everyone in the room knew who shot those two gunmen. Yeah. Well, even Sonny didn't ask. Not only Sonny, but Phil Terry and Leslie Marsh. And Phil's brother, Arthur. Well, there was a good reason why Arthur wasn't curious. There was? Yes, we haven't had a chance to tell you before, Reggie, but Arthur wasn't curious because it was Arthur who did the shooting. Oh, look here, you're sure? Oh, we practically caught him red-handed. But will you tell me why Phil and Marx and Sonny didn't ask? You, you think they knew? Well, they knew something. But look, he, you trust Sonny, don't you? Well, naturally. Well, couldn't we just get a hold of Sonny and get it out of her? Well, we might try. I don't like it. You don't like what? Why should Sonny be keeping anything from us? Why should she be keeping a secret with Marx and Phil Terry? Well, of course, she has known Marx and Terry much longer than she's known us. Yeah, but we're the ones who are trying to get her out of this mess. Yeah, it does kind of make you wonder, don't it? When are we going to be able to see Marx? Well, the doctor said not before tomorrow, shock and the loss of the thumb. Hey, we ain't expecting no telephone calls, are we? Hello? Yes? No, this is Reggie York. Yes, he's here. I say Donald Rupp... Hey, Reg. Just quiet. Yeah. Yes, I'll tell him. Right up. What's the matter, Reggie? That was Donald Robert Lincoln. He wants us to come right out to his home. Well, ain't he got a nice disposition. He said to hurry. It was important. First he has Jack hit over the head and thrown in a calaboose, and now he invites him out to his home. Well, come on. We're wasting time. Y- you mean we're going? Well, certainly we're going. Grab your hats. Well, shouldn't we leave a note for Sonny? Well, she's over at the hospital with Phil, isn't she? Yes, quiet. Well, we needn't bother. We'll have to use her car, though. Yes, down in front. 
All right. Well, all set. Well, what do you suppose this Lincoln feller's got on his mind? It'll be interesting to see. No, I, I still think we ought to leave word where we're going. Why? Oh, I, I smell a trap. Well, what of it? Yeah, we don't want the Marines galloping up to get us out of a hole. Mm, I don't. Well, here she is. You want me to drive, Jack? All right. Oh, here, just a minute. What's the matter? Well, let's make sure there aren't any torpedoes planted in the back seat on this ride. Hey, they wouldn't have the gall to try the same trick twice. Yeah, I guess you're right. Up in the back, Richie. That's right. Go ahead, slide down the little down. Yeah. We're not going to a fire now, so take it easy. <laughs> Just a backseat driver at heart. Get out! Get out of the car! Man, oh man. Oh, it blowed right up in my you, hands. You, you all right, Doc? Uh, anybody hurt? Don't tell me the automobile ain't dangerous. Oh, never mind that. Where's Reggie? <laughs> Let's say. Here I am. Are you all right? No, oh, I think so. I got out of the car, but the explosion knocked me flat. Will you tell me what done that? Uh, certainly I'll tell you. One of our playful friends put a load of dynamite under the hood and wired it to the ignition. When you put your foot on the starter, it exploded. Well, fella, we're having more fun than anybody. You think so? Huh? I say, Jack, is this the reason Donald Robert Lincoln was so anxious for us to come and see him? Hey, you mean he's the one who had that exterminating powder put under the hood? Well, that's what we want to find out. Come on. Where are we heading for now? Across the park to the hospital. But hadn't we ought to get out to Lincoln? Well, this way, shortest. Well, I said hadn't we ought to get No. Out. Okay, fella, you're the doctor. You coming, Reggie? It's quiet. The crowd's beginning to gather back at the wreck. Yeah. If we're going to do much more of this hundred-yard dash stuff, I'm going to get me a pair of running breeches. Across the street. Okay. Come on, the elevator. We're going up to Phil Terry's room? No. You mean we're going to Leslie Mark's room? Yeah. Get in. Fourth floor, please. But if the doctor said Marx wasn't to be disturbed... I still say Marx was too slightly hurt for all the fuss that was made. You sure are set on making Marx the villain, fella. All right, come on. You know which room Marks was taken to? Yeah, 432. And this is it here. Well, now we're here, what? Not a word. I'm going to see how quietly I can open this door. Uh-huh. Got it? Uh-huh. I'm going to open it, crack. I Keep your ears cut. The situation is more desperate than it's ever been. He's talking on the phone. Shut up. That's Listen. what I've been telling you all along. We've got to fight fire with fire. Got our backs right up against the wall, and there's only... <laughs> Doc, you fool. Who is that? Who is that in the hall? I, I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of good that does. Who is that out in the hall? Come on. Hello, Max. How's the shoulder? Uh, what's this? What are you doing here? We just came up to see how the latest victim of the Richard Curse is doing. You were standing outside my door listening. Were we? Well, that's pretty dirty politics. Got a fever, there's no telling what a man might say when he's light in the head. Oh, oh, you're light in the head. A bullet in your shoulder is nothing to take lightly. I, I've caught myself talking to myself several times. You were talking to yourself, huh? What do you mean? It sounded to us as though you were talking over the telephone. That's ridiculous. I, I haven't the strength to lift a telephone receiver. You, uh, know what happened to us just now? Will you go away and leave me alone? I'm in no condition to have visitors. Someone put dynamite under the hood of Sonny's car. We started to take a ride in it, and it blew up. How did you escape? Well, we saw it coming, rolled out of the car. Max, why are you pretending to be so much worse off than you really are? I'm not pretending. Yes, you are. Well, Packard, I'm scared. Scared? So scared, I'm going to stay right here in this hospital with this superficial wound until this mob of gunmen is wiped out. Well, spank me for a baby. Yell. I've been a target for a gunman once. That's plenty. Mind if I use your phone? Well, go ahead. Outside, please. Who were you, uh, talking to on the phone? I wasn't. Uh-huh. Hello? Donald Robert Lincoln residence? This is the police department. I want to talk to Mr. Lincoln at once. Thank you. Why are you calling Lincoln? I'd rather know what you were about to tell us about Lincoln when you were shot. And I've changed my mind about that. You're not going to talk? No. Oh, uh, hello, Lincoln. This is Jack Packard. That's it, the man you had slugged and thrown into jail. 
I just wanted to tell you that someone just blew up our car, so we won't be able to keep our appointment with you. What's that? Well, the appointment you called about ten minutes ago, and you... Oh, you didn't call. Uh-huh. Can you prove that? I see. Thank you. Mark's Lincoln didn't call us. He's got an ironclad alibi. What about it? Just this. If Donald Robert Lincoln isn't the man we're after, then it's got to be you. transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. This program came from... The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller. Tell you, Captain, we've got our man. It's got to be the man. You haven't got a thing on Leslie Marks, and you know it, Packard. He's still the mastermind behind this mob. Just the same, Jack. The captain's right. We ain't got nothing on him. Well, looky, the way he acted when you accused him face to face of being the gang leader... How did he act? Well, he just plum laughed in our face. Naturally. I'm not through with him yet. I've got Reggie planted up on the fire escape outside his window. If he tries to pull anything while he's lying in bed pretending to be badly wounded, we'll trip him up. If we can only pick up the gunman that shot him, it may help. Uh, you know it won't. We've got seven of the mob down behind bars now. Have you been able to get any information out of them? No. Certainly not. They just won't talk. And I still say Leslie Marks had himself slightly wounded to turn suspicion from him. Hey, Captain, not to change the subject, but you got any line on them fellas that put that dynamite under the hood of Sonny's car? We've got a dragnet up. Man, was that an explosion? Oh, that's not essential here. They get back to Marks. Haggard, why are you so sure it's Marks? Well, he's the logical man. Why is he the logical man? You can't bring forth one single reason. There's not one way in which he benefits by keeping men away from Sonny Richards. Well, there must be a reason. That's what's driving me nuts. But why? Why is he doing it? Why doesn't he want men around Sonny? Why is he trying so hard to get rid of Doc and Reggie and me? You tell me why, and I'll personally go up and put handcuffs on him. Wait a minute. Maybe we're getting somewhere. Doc. Yeah? Go up to Phil Terry's room and ask Sonny to come down here. Yeah, okay. Oh, and Doc. Now what? Uh, if uh, Phil's brother Arthur's up there, bring him down too. Only park him outside until we're ready for him. Why not? Now what do you think you're going to do? Look, Captain, we're going to stop looking for the man. You're going to do what? Yeah. For the moment, we're going to forget all about a mastermind. All we're going to try to find out now is why. This thing is not turning your mind, is it? No, look. All we're going to do is to try to dig out of Sonny something that might suggest a reason why someone would want to keep men away from her. Dig down into her mind. She must have the answer somewhere in her unconscious mind. She may not even know what's the answer. You see? No, I don't. Will you tell me how you're going to dig information out of a girl's mind if she doesn't even know it's there? Well, I don't know. But it's worth trying. What do you want the kid for? Arthur? Well, he knows something, and I'm going to get it out of him. Something about the case? Yes. I, uh, I didn't tell you before, but... Well, little Arthur was the one who sprayed those two torpedoes with buckshot. Those two men you picked up in the basement of that brownstone house. The kid did that? Yes. He won't then... admit it, but I know he did. Well, then he saved your lives. Well, maybe. 
But more important, I want to know how he happened to be at the Brownstone house, how he happened to have a sawed-off shotgun, and why he went to all the pains of getting out of bed with a broken arm to come to our rescue. Yeah, it looks like a good bet. Why didn't you tell me this before? Yeah, because I thought I... Uh, they're waiting in here. Uh, come on in, Sonny. What is it now? Doc wouldn't tell me anything. Shut the door, Doc. Yeah. I think you've met Captain Norton before, Sonny. Yes. Sit down here, Miss Richards. Thank you. Sonny, this is very important. I want you to think before you answer each question. I think. Did anyone ever say to you, you must never marry? No. You're sure about that? For any reason, whatever, at any time in the past? Yes, Jack, I'm sure. Not for any reason. Well, then, did anyone ever express a dislike of seeing you in men's company? That's an awfully hard question to answer. Why? Well, well, for instance, my father used to say to me that he wished I wouldn't go out with certain boys... And then after Father died, Leslie Marks urged me not to go around with Phil. Hey, he did? Oh, but that's nothing. Even Phyllis said that he wished I wouldn't be seen with certain men he didn't like. I mean, it's so hard to answer because... Well, almost every man that's close to a girl disapproves of at least one other man. But none of them disapproved of you going out with all men. Oh, no, no. It was just men they personally disliked. Uh -huh. Would you mind answering a personal question? Oh, yes, if I can. How many men have been in love with you? Oh, Captain, that's an impossible question. Well, all right, let me be more specific. Would you mind naming for us the men who have proposed marriage to you? Well, that's very personal. I said it was. Do you mind? Well, Phil, of course. Uh, we know that. And then, well, there were two boys while I was in college, Hugh Bartlett and Jimmy Pearson. They're in San Diego now? Oh, no, no. He was back going to Annapolis and... Jimmy's got some kind of a job with an oil company in the Philippines. Well, let, let's sum up. Go on. Oh, I hate to say this, but Judge Morton... Old Judge Morton proposed marriage to you? Now, wait a minute. Isn't he the old friend of your father's that fell down your front steps and was killed? Yes, that happened only a week or two after he asked me to marry him. But he was old enough to be your father. I know. I was a little bit ashamed of it. The old fool. Go on. Well, the only other person was... Oh, please don't get the wrong impression. He was very kind and understanding. You're talking about Leslie Marks, aren't you? Yes. I think that's all, Sonny. Any more questions, Captain? No. Sonny, I think the case is all wrapped up. You're the same as freed from the Richard Curse now and forever. You, you know who's behind all this? Yes, and now I think we know the reason why. But who is it? We'll wait just a little while longer, just a few minutes. Well, may I tell this much to Phil? Sure, why not? Oh, I hope you know what you're talking about. Let her out, Doc. You, you are telling me the truth, aren't you? Positively. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. You, you want Arthur? He's outside. Shut the door for a minute. Well, there you are, Captain. There's your reason why. Leslie Marx wanted Sonny for himself. When he couldn't have her, he went a little crazy and determined to keep everyone else away from her. It's a reason, all right. But it's not good enough. Not good enough? How are you going to prove it? I don't need any more proof. Well, the courts do. You haven't got a single thread of evidence. Well, Doc, bring, bring Arthur in here. You bet you. All right, Arthur. Come on in, son, and meet the law. It's all right, Arthur. Come on in, sit down. This is Arthur, Phil Terry's brother, Captain. Yeah, I've heard about you. How are you, Arthur? I hate cops. Oh, do you indeed? Yeah. Oh, no, that's just too bad. What have we ever done to antagonize you? I just don't like you, see? Yeah, I'm beginning to. Okay. Now we got that straight. What do you want? Arthur, why did you take the trouble of shooting those two thugs in the basement of the Brownstone house last night? I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to tell us if it's the last thing you do, so you might as well open up and make it easy for yourself. How did you know those gunmen were going to take us there? What gunmen? Where? Where did you get that sawed-off shotgun you used? I've never even seen a sawed-off shotgun in my life. Where did you get that shotgun? I tell where you... Where did you get that shotgun? Oh, go take a jump at yourself. You see, Arthur, we know more than you think we know. We know who the head of the mob is now. No. No, no, you don't. We not only know who he is, but why he's been carrying on this reign of terror. I don't believe it. We certainly do. All we're trying to get out of you is your part of it. Everything else is all tied up. Now I know you're lying. What's that? Sure, because if you knew the head of the gang, you'd, you'd know where I stood. <laughs> no, know everything, huh? You don't know nothing. Packard, I think you better let me take this boy down to police headquarters. You ain't got anything on me. Shooting two men with a sawed-off shotgun? Hmm. I think we got plenty on you, son. I, I didn't. That's not true. Unless you want to come clean, you're going to go with me. Yeah? Yeah. 
Well, I don't know nothing, see? Under those circumstances, young man, you may consider yourself... Are you expecting a call, Captain? No. Well, I'll take it. Hello? Reggie, where are you? What, sir? You say... Well, stay right where you are. We're coming. Captain, that was Reggie. Leslie Marks have been shot to death in his bed. Hey, what you talking about? Murder, shot in the hallway. Come on. Hey, where did you say that girl Sonny was going? Well, uh, Sonny... Sonny, well, she said she is going to Phil's room. What's that? Yeah, Sonny's up in Phil Terry's room. And Phil, the best news in the world. I've just come from Jack and Captain Norton. Captain Norton? Yes, he's from the police department. He and Jack and Doc are questioning people down in the hospital waiting room. Well, so Packard's called in the police, huh? But Phil, he's been working with the police I heard along. What are they doing down there? They're questioning people. They question you? Yes, and the strangest questions I ever heard. They've got Arthur down there now. Arthur? Yes, and they told me the most wonderful news. What sort of questions did they ask you, Sonny? Well, aren't you interested in the news? I asked you what sort of questions they asked you. Why, well, mostly about my personal life. First, did anyone ever forbid me going around with men? Ask you that, huh? Yeah, and, and then they asked me for the list of all the men who'd ever proposed marriage to me. <laughs> Makes quite a list, don't it? With Jack Packard's name at the head of the list. Oh, Phil... I've got something to confess to you now. I mean, it's all right to tell it now. What's that? I'm not in love with Jack Packard. What's that? No. I'm sorry I had to hurt you by pretending that I was, but he said it was necessary to make people think we were going to marry. So you ain't in love with Packard? Huh? No. It was just a trap to draw the fire of, of whoever has been doing all these horrible things. So that was it. How come you're telling me this now? But that's it. There's no longer any need for secrecy. No? No. They know who the man is. And they're going to arrest him in just a few minutes. Who told you that? Jack, just now. He said to give them a few minutes more to clean up the details. Did he happen to mention the name of this man? No, he wouldn't tell. He said in a few minutes... You're sure he knows? Oh, yes. I think that's why he has Captain Norton with him. To make the arrest. Mm Mm-hmm. Sonny. Yes, Phil? Why shouldn't you know who this killer is? Like the rest of them. Oh, well, I don't know. I think it's a dirty shame holding out on you. Oh, Phil, I don't know what you mean. It's very simple, Sonny. I think you ought to know. So I'm going to tell you. You? You're going to tell me? That's right. If I wasn't a bedridden cripple, I wouldn't have time to tell you because I'd be making my getaway. Phil, what do you say? But the way things are, there's no possible chance for escape. Well, Phil, stop talking like that. Sure, I'm the guy. I'm the leader of the mob. It was a mighty good mob, too, until them three Boy Scouts busted in here. Phil, Phil it isn't true. Sure, it's true. I've been head of the mob for three years, and after I was hurt, I kept right on being head of the mob. Why did you do this to me? What did I ever do to you that you should surround me with murder and horror? You don't know why. No. Well, then I'll tell you why. When I woke up in this hospital and saw I was never going to have you, I, I made up my mind right then that nobody else was going to have you either. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And that still goes, see? Phil. Phil, where did you get that gun? I've been saving it. I knew this had happened sometime. I've been saving it. For me? That's right. If I can't have you, no one else is going to have you either. transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery.
Martin Morse adventure thriller. Boy, Leslie Morse sure is dead this time. How did it happen, Reg? Well, so fast it was all over before I knew what was going on. I, I was watching outside his window on the fire escape. Marks was sitting up in bed talking on the phone. Well, suddenly the whole doorway there whipped open and a hand holding a revolver poked through and... Well, that's all there was to it. You didn't get a look at him? No, Captain. Nothing but the fist with the gun in it. Well, the hospital surrounded. No one who can't be positively identified is allowed through the police lines. Well, what's the matter, Jack? Marks kicking off seems to have knocked you all in a heat. Yeah, it has. I never thought he is such a good friend of ours. Friend, nothing. I'm up a stump. All my theories have been knocked into a cocked hat. That's crying. Now we know Marx isn't the mob leader. Careful, Packet. I wouldn't touch anything until the medical examiner arrives. Yeah, wait a minute. Well, what's the matter, fella? Captain Norton, there's an envelope in Mark's pajama pocket. What's that? Might throw some light on the situation. How about getting it? Letter, huh? Oh, yes, of course. You'll have to turn the body over a little. Uh-uh. Not any more than necessary. All right. Easy with him, Doc. Yeah. There. Hold it. I can reach it. Hold it. You uh, got it? Yep, let him roll back. I say, it's a sealed envelope. Well, we'll see about this. Yeah, what about it? Well, listen to this. To whom it may concern. In case of my sudden demise, be it known that the estate of Sonny Richards is intact and in good condition, as the records in my office will testify. If I have in any way appeared violent and desperate of late, it was for no other reason than sheer nerves. I'm not a brave man, and for the past six months, it has seemed to me I've been staring death straight in the face. I've seen those close to Sonny die right and left and always expected we might turn next. I don't know why this has happened or who was doing it. My first impulse was to turn Sonny's estate over to the court and get out, but I couldn't. I was afraid to stay on, but more afraid to admit I was a coward. Since I've been attacked once before, there is every reason to believe I will be attacked again. Next time, probably fatally. So I write this letter. Leslie Marks. Hmm. Isn't that dolly pathetic? Oh, Jack, you sure enough had Leslie Marks all wrong. Yeah, it looks like it. I wonder if... I'll get it. Hello? Who's got it? Yes, he's right here. Uh, Captain Norton, it's one of your men. Oh, thanks. Hello? Yeah. You got him? Good. Bring him right up here. Yeah, to Mark's room. Fine. What's that? I see. Cleaned out the place, eh? That's good. Tell Mahoney to book him incommunicado. All right. Caught our gunman? I'll say they caught him. Got him trying to get through the lines in an intern's white uniform. We're trying to play it smart, huh? But that's not all. The plainclothes men raided the service garage. The garage where Donald Robert Lincoln's car was stolen from? Picked up four men wanted by the police for a long time. Hey, you police boys are doing all right. Let's just about round up the whole mob, Captain. You already have seven in the clink. This torpedo you picked up downstairs and the four at the garage make twelve. It's a pretty good-sized gang in itself. I'll say all except the leader. Yeah, a man we really want. Look, Captain, you don't need us for the moment. I'd like one of you to stay. Well, how about it, Reggie? I don't. All right, come on with me, Doc. Sure. Uh, where are we heading for now? Down the hall to Phil Terry's room. The Sonny's act. I know. I hate to have to break the news of Mark's death to her. Yeah. She believed in him right straight through. Well, the quicker she knows about it, the quicker she'll get over it. Well, this is it. Yeah. Hey. Sonny's crying. Come on. Hey, Jack. Jack. Phil Terry's got a gun. Yeah, so I got a gun. No, you don't. Come away from that door. What's all this about? Close that door, Packard. Sure. And don't try to run for it, because if you do, I'll drill Sonny right through the heart. You'll kill Sonny? Yeah. Now close the door. Come over and line up alongside Sonny at the foot of the bed. Both of you. Yeah, sure. So you know who the leader of the mob is. Who told you that? Sonny did. Told me everything, didn't you, Sonny? I wish I were dead. I don't want to live. Well, don't worry, Sonny. I'm going to take care of that, too, oh. along with your two boyfriends here. <laughs> so Sonny told you that we knew the mob leader. Yeah, what's so funny about that? Nothing. Only it looks like you've gone off half cocked. Yeah? Yes, you see, when we told Sonny that, we thought that Leslie Marks was the man. Marks, huh? Yes, it never occurred to us that you were the man until we walked into this room just now and found you so hot and bothered. I see. So I played it dumb. Well, it's always the way it is with the smart boys. Sooner or later, they make that one big mistake. And that's the end. Okay, okay, I can take it. Curtains for me. But curtains for a lot of other smart guys, too. Oh, going to shoot us like dogs, huh, fella? Oh, that amuses you. Not very much. But look, Phil, I can see why you might be mad at Jack and me. But what did you want to go bothering Sonny for? You ain't never had no better friend than son. Oh, please. What do you think all the shooting's been about? How you mean? When I came to in this hospital and found I was never going to have Sonny, 
I promised myself nobody else was going to have her either. And that just about explains everything. Yeah. Now that I'm washed up, I'm still going to see that no one else has Sonny. Uh-huh. I get you. Tell me something, Phil. Well, did you organize your gang after you were brought to the hospital? That's a pretty dumb question. How can you organize a mob in a hospital? Then you were in the business before. That's right. But Sonny said you was a pro at the golf club. Sure. Swell blind and put me right next to the best people. One more question. The death of Sonny's parents in that plane crash was none of your doing. No, no, it was an accident as far as I know. And your own auto wreck was an accident? That's right. But all the rest of the deaths were the work of your gunman. Correct. Well, I guess that's all. You got any more questions, Doc? Nope. Sonny? No. Well, here we are, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as you say, here you are. All lined up in a row. I ain't shot a rod since I've been in this place. But I guess I'll do all right. Yeah, and at six feet, you should ought to be terrific. Who's that? Hello, Phil. Arthur. What are you doing here? Wasn't you expecting me? What are you doing with that rod? Well, you've got one, Phil. We're brothers. We're just alike. Didn't I tell you the next time I caught you? Sure, sure, Phil. Only this time it's different. Yeah? Yeah. I've known for a long time you was head of that mob. I was all right. I knew you were having folks pumped off. That that was all right, too. But I kind of took a liking to Packard and Doc Long here. Yeah? Yeah, that's why I took that sawed-off shotgun down to the brownstone house and blasted two of your torpedoes. Yeah, yeah, I was afraid that's how it was. Sure. That wasn't all right. And no matter how I acted, I think Sonny's a swell girl. So what you got in mind now ain't all right either. Why, you little sawed-off meaty mouth. You ain't ever gonna slap me around or choke me again, Phil. I don't hate you, Phil. I I wish I... I wasn't gonna do what I'm gonna do. I I wish you was a... a swell brother a fella could be proud of. Brother... Arthur, Get away from me. Don't come near me. Now, looky, Arthur. You two fellas are... Shut up. Go on, kid. Get out of here. Beat it. No. I'm warning you. Beat it. Goodbye, Phil. No, no, no. Get Terry's gun, Doc. I got it. Arthur. Arthur. That's all right, sir. He's gone. Jack, come over here at the bed. Phil's going fast. What's that? Yeah. Little Arthur wasn't such a bad shot himself. Here, let's see. Oh, let me alone. I'm washed up. Huh? How about Arthur? He didn't know what hit him. Yeah, crazy little punk. I always told him I'd make a man out of him. Or kill him, try him. Looks like you did both, fella. He sure was plenty a man for my money a minute ago. Well, so long. Those fellas over again, ready? I know. All right, all right, hold it. Fella, this is what I call an airplane job. Boy, if it ain't. Well, that's all we can do this afternoon. What time is it? About six o'clock. Oh, let's call it a day. Come on down, Reggie. Right on. Well, here she is. Our very own airplane already for us. Why, it don't seem any time since we was a-grousing around because we had to wait two weeks for the factory to get it ready. Now, yeah, these last two weeks have passed in a hurry, haven't they? Well, roll your sleeves down, Reggie. It's all for tonight. I think we'll be ready to take off by tomorrow afternoon. Don't you, Jack? Then look out, Central America. Well, we can't get out of San Diego any too fast to shoot me after what happened last night. You mean Phil and Arthur using each other for shooting targets? Mm, quiet. Forget it. We're going to have a busy time if we get away tomorrow. Reggie, you'll have to finish up the work on the plane. Mm, suits me. Doc, it's up to you to get our clearance papers for the ship and see to our passports. Yeah, I'll get them out and dust them off. Feller, I don't know when I've been so head up. Central America, doggone. It does promise a bit of adventure, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, sir, Doc, if it don't... Doc! What? Well, hey, that's Sonny's boy. Well, what's she doing out here at the airport? Hey, Sonny, here we are. I thought I'd catch you out here. Mm, Joe, I hope there isn't any more trouble. Hello, boys. How's the plane coming? Fine, fine. We're pulling out tomorrow. Oh, I see. Why? Is there anything the matter? Very much the matter. Yeah? Well, what? Me. Well, what do you mean, you? What do you think I mean? You're going to pull out and I'm stuck here? You think I like this place any better than you do after what's happened? Phil and Arthur and, and Leslie Marks? He's crying. A bit like a morgue. Yes. Well, you three have been so swell to me. I... 
I know it's an imposition, but I just couldn't help asking one thing more. Well, let's have it, fella. What do you want? Well, take me with you. Oh, look here. Hey, uh, we're going down into the Central American jungle. I can't think of any better place to forget than you. Won't you please? I'll pay my way and I won't be any bother. I mean, just because I'm a girl won't matter. Anything goes. What I don't like, I won't see. Well, now, I don't know about that. Uh, what do you say, Jack? Well, we could use some more money. Yeah, we are going to be kind of short of dough when we get all our equipment. Oh, look here. Oh, now, please, Thomas. please. You mean you'll consider it? Why not, if Doc and Reggie agree? Well, it, it ain't the way we planned it. But it, as you say, why not? Reggie? Oh, I say, a girl. Oh, Reggie, are, are you going to... Oh, I oh, say so you're not going to cry. I am, too. I'm so disappointed. But I haven't said you couldn't go. Uh, oh, look here. Will you stop those valley tears? Then I can go? Yes, fine. But I bloody well don't like it. Oh, Reggie, you're wonderful. <laughs> Reggie, son. Well, what? Doggone, fella. But you sure are a sucker for winning. transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Forson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. This program came from New York.